podcast is intended for mature audiences. The views and opinions expressed are those of the panelists and do not reflect in any way those of the podcast partners, sponsors, or affiliates. Enjoy. Hi, this is Michael Buffer, and you're listening to the voice of the people. Let's get ready for Boxing Voice. Hey, Daddy. This is Dollar Beat. BoxingVoice.com. No matter what nobody say, man. Spirit, can't nobody fuck with me, man. You know, I can't be fucked with, you know. Dollar D. Beyonce Productions. Whether you pay to see me win mm. or you pay to see me lose, mm. you're going to pay. Mm. Fuck, if the kids still got to eat. Mm. I don't have to watch, mm. you know, any footage of a, a fighter. Mm. I mean, because I'm Floyd Mayweather, everybody got to watch me. I knew eventually I was going to have to fight Oscar mm. I feel like, um, I feel like he was straight up and down, no really no special effects. Boxingboys.com. How can Canelo have the biggest deal? Your, your deal is for 300 million, and I made, I made 350 million just in one fight. And you're fighting on the app. Boxingboys.com. I'm a king, okay? I eat a feast. Well, every time I eat, I eat a feast. And when I get up from the table, I don't give a fuck who get the leftovers. At the end of the day, Follow my green friend. What up, what up, what up, what up, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Boxing Voice Radio. Hashtag TBV Podcast, wherever hashtags are used, and you know the number to call in, 1425-569-50. 241. Press 1 one time to voice your opinion right here on the Voice of the People hotline where we will be reviewing this weekend's fights. We also will be discussing the biggest headlines and newsworthy topics out there. And we're going to start off with Earl Spence Jr. revealing a tragic, graphic accident photo from that accident one year ago then we'll move on to Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua the triangle of sin amongst these men and all the drama as the internet is on fire due to a mail.com interview suggesting that Wilder is out and AJ Fury moves forward for next year Frank Warren confirming it, Bob Arum confirming it, but then Shelly Finkel saying it's all blah, blah, caca. (gasps) Yeah, I know, drama. Then we got to talk Canelito, as you know. Uh, Looks like he sued DAZN and Golden Boy, but uh, there's going to be some more stuff happening over there, not just his lawsuit, but there seems to be, you know, DAZN seems to have put in their own motions to have this brought back to uh, federal court. I believe it's federal court they want to go back to or back to the state district, but we'll give you all those details in just a bit. Also got to talk this weekend's fights on ESPN and the fact that it looks like we're going to get undisputed between Jose Ramirez and Josh Teller as uh, MTK Global's own Jack Cottrell had something very honorable to say and we'll give you all those details And then, last but not least, BT Sports Boxing. Liam Williams looking like a true crusher, one-round destruction, sending a message to Demetrius Andre. And you're going to want to hear the message that Andre sent back to him. Don't let me forget it. But anyway, I know I was long-winded. Coach Mitty across the pond. And we got Canada's own Francis. What it do, gentlemen? Good afternoon. Or evening now. What up? What up? I don't know, man. Working on the weekend like usual, I guess. You know, yeah. way off on the deep end like usual. Bars. <laughs> Yo, you know, th- those are my bars, man. Don't get confused, man. <laughs> no, nah, but like, yeah, you know, I-, I like the topics for tonight, right? So, you know, that that's all I can say. I can't wait to get into it. And Francis, man, how you doing, my man? What's going on, Nestor Gibbs? Midi. All the way across the pond. First of all, I want to thank, you know what I'm saying, the Most High for another one. He's blessed us with another one to be with y'all, you know what I'm saying, in TBV land. Just so you all know, um, these topics are amazing, in my personal opinion. 
Tyson Fury trying to slide his way through to fight AJ to make a big fight. Deontay Wilder is not really about that type of action right now. He's trying to get back in the ring. They have to sort that out. Jose Ramirez, Jack Cattrall did a big, big, big thing as a stable mate and as a man. You know what I'm saying? But there was a little bit of a caveat. You know what I'm saying? There was a little sweetener to the deal for Jack Cattrall for him to do so. So we definitely want to talk about that. Yeah, I'm excited, man. It's always good to talk boxing. It's always, you know what I'm saying, good to be here. What up, y'all? Well, Yo's. let's start with uh, Earl Spence shocking and breaking the internet with that graphic photo. Man, When we, just when we thought we knew what he went through, he releases a photo. It wasn't specific as to how many days after the accident that was. Was it immediately? But he definitely said a year to the date in the caption. And uh, maybe we should go ahead and read that caption that says, A year today, I don't know how or why I got saved, but thank God. The thought of leaving my little girl and, excuse me, little girls and them growing up without me still fucks with me. But I'm triple blessed and must be here for a reason. Uh, and he cro- got a crossing fingers emoji and like a, like a, like a, like a, you know, like a smirk face. Like, you know, yo, I'm here for a reason face. And uh, listen, I, I, I said that before. Some of our listeners have said like he needs to change his man, his name to like Miracle Man at this point and, and, and kind of um, run with the accident. People laughed at me when I said something like that. They said, oh, how are you going to glorify the accident and, and use it as buildup? Nah, but, but it's but, Daniel Jacobs, isn't it? Miracle Man. Miracle Man. It? Miracle Man is Daniel Jacobs. But listen, this is a miracle. Look at those it pictures. Is, Look at those it, pictures. He went through the roof. This was a convertible. You know, like he, he didn't have to be here. And he is, like he says, for a reason. Is that to be undisputed? Is that to teach, you know, the youth not to make the same mistakes he did? But there's definitely a reason being able to walk away from that type of an accident without any broken bones. I mean, just looking at his face, how could we? How is it that his face didn't get broken? Yo, I, I agree with you know. He's blessed. What do you mean? That's why he's, he's blessed. Be- he's yeah, blessed. Yeah. Not to cut you, Mitty. You know what I'm saying? That's why we say prayers. You know what I'm saying? For those who, whatever you believe in, you say a prayer. You know what I mean? For a reason. <laughs> It's for protection. It's for covering. And if anybody out there that got a grandmother, got a, got a grandfather, uncle, auntie, that knows how to pray, when you leave, or your mama or your daddy, when you leave the house, wherever you are in the world, they always say a prayer for you. And those are the prayers that cover you from pitfalls. Sometimes you get into a pitfall, but it could have been worse. But the prayer saved it from being... You know what I mean? The ultimate it could be. Let's nah, be for Nah, me. you know what? I'm uh, 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 my family's super religious, right? They they were raised Pentecostal Christian, then obviously those that, you know, uh branched out on their own, they became regular Christians and they believe in that. They believe like the prayers of my mother have uh, you know, kind of situated me in in certain situations because my mom's been praying over me or hoping for the best for me for all these years. So I hear you, man. Listen, he's Jamaican, any, though. Any, anybody, any, any, any little yeah. Jamaican things, you know what I'm saying, that you got for us, there? That's what yeah. I'm trying to show you. Like, that's what they do. They, you know what I'm saying, family that prays together stays together. So he, and he said it all, he said it too, man. When he was leaving, you know, his mom was like, yo, don't leave. You know what I'm saying? And while he was leaving, she's like, all right, at least let me pray for you. Where? Before? Yup. Be- yeah, I mean, before he left the house and while he was in the parking lot hanging out, a dude walked up to him and said, yo, just let me pray for you. He's what? like, I don't know you from nowhere. I don't want nothing. I just want to pray for you. And he prayed for him. You know what I'm wow. saying? And he's like, those are the things that made me live, be here right now. This is big fish we talk about, man. Super <laughs> chat. Super chat. Yeah. Matt, Matt Bent says, Spence is here for his children. God doesn't pick sides. Yeah, I mean, I think you misunderstood. When I said, is he here to undispute? I'm not saying God's picking him to be undisputed. I'm saying, Uh, you know, through his mm. story, the man that survived this accident goes on to be undisputed. It could motivate dozens and dozens of new boxers, children, et cetera. But go ahead, Mitty. I'm sorry. We've been having No, I I mean, I agree. I, I agree that, you know, he can definitely use his story to inspire 
uh, he can definitely use his story to show the bad side of doing some things, right? Like the too much partying and all those things, right? Uh, so that that's a blessing, definitely. Like when you look back at it, like we've all seen the video of the, the car crash. Like So I don't know why people are shocked about the picture. When I see the picture, I'm like, hell yeah, I was expecting something like that. I was not even expecting him to be there right now. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, so yeah, the, the picture is awful. Uh, but like Francis said, he's blessed and he can definitely use that, you know, to inspire more people. I'm sure he's already inspiring people by coming back and use the story. I don't think he has to change his name to Miracle Man, but using the story is definitely nah, he the, truth. the way to is the uh, way to go, man. Yeah, but you the know, truth sounds a little arrogant, especially when no, considering no, it don't. especially no, when it considering don't. the accident and, and everything that he's saying in this statement to you know, I get sticking with his original can I, name. Can I, can I explain to you why? Sure, I would love to hear it. Love it. The reason why is because many are called, but few are chosen. So when you are chosen, you're just right. choose. There many things are chosen for many different areas and many different things. Ness, many were called, bro, but only you were chosen to do this. Oh, right? man. Right He's trying here, to bro. butter me up so I can, so I can take I'm sides with him, with you, man. <laughs> He's trying to butter me up so I can take hey, sides. Hey, Mitty, I got it, but it's all good. You know it. Yeah, no, I mean, like, hey, I, I know that Francis is a pastor during the day, man. He's like a, a TBV co-host at night with pastor during the day, bro. Yo, <laughs> let know? me take this quick uh, second to say... Uh, that as far as I know, you know, Brandon, since he won last month uh, on the Pick'em Fantasy Pick'em League with TBV, if you don't know what that is, pay attention. Uh, since he won last month, let's just highlight him. Mitty was under the impression that maybe, not just Mitty, Mitty and others, myself included, were under the impression maybe maybe Brandon was leading us astray in wanting to pick Vija. But according to the Pick'em League, he has 12 right this week which makes him one short of perfect, which makes him yet again one week not perfect like Nestor. Just saying. I'm just saying that this is exactly why I want this stuff written down so you can see. This is now three weeks in a row with a paid parlay. If you if you, if you you joining us on Beat em, The Odds with TBV, I've given you three parlays where you can easily win money simple. And now this is my second straight week getting 13 right in a row. I've increase since Mitty told me that I was like ninth I'm now in seventh place just saying just saying Nyjah on the other hand is still number one Jemmy is now the most intelligent uh TBV Patreon that we have in he decided to do some sort of side negotiation with the real Nyjah chick from out of the UK and he's paying for her Fantasy Pick'em Fee dues, which I guess they'll share the pot, and they're number one. Um, so, yeah, I'm just like, wow. It keeps changing. My Jimbe, you keep slipping, champ. You keep slipping. Oh, bro, you, you just opened that email or what? Like, I'm always talking about Spence right now, man. Right? Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I, I didn't no, just I take didn't. a left turn like this. Well, well, because of those, you know, getting it right. Right, like All right. All knowing right. for the people know that when you say something, it's not just like you know blah blah blah. Like these things come true. So you know those people deserve to be highlighted, like real Naja chick who's in number one. Uh, my Jean been number two. Galito yet again, he's the first winner in number two as well. A lot of people are number two. Kristen Camillo, long time listener in number two. Javier as well. Ryan O'Rourke, Brandon from one to three. Wow. Info Joe in third. And Sony, surprisingly, in fourth place. Listen, I think, like, we'll, we'll get to it. We, we'll get to what caused some people to slip down when we reviewed the well, first this weekend. And then, it was and Vija. There's one specifically where, to me, there was, like, you know, very little rational for picking dude, but, you know, uh, and that's what showed, right, in the fight. But, hey, man, you know, sometimes, you know, the, the you know, the title and the league makes you change your mind and change your rational. You you seeing things that aren't there, you know what I mean? So anyway, man. Like, yeah. we, so Nyjah, can... her, her her championship words were stay hungry, 
Stay humble. <laughs> we're pray, she said, we're she, she said two times in a row. Two times. Yo, two times. Yo, but she's already announced that after she takes the pot, she's retiring because she enjoys the real league better. I like to call it the real league. These guys want to say amateur. I, I don't know, you know. Yo, it it's like, it is Jimmy, man. You know, you talked about negotiation. I don't know if they negotiated, but I think it's Jimmy better uni unilateral decision. And I might bike fire on him. I didn't see no agreement that they're going to share the pot, man. So that's going to be funny. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they talk. They, he would uh, be great unless he's just like into Naj and he wants her to win and, you know, go ooh. to the spa. All right. Maybe. Hey, Who many, knows? Many people gift certain things to people. Maybe he's gifting her one month. <coughs> one month <coughs> hey. of, the, of the fantasy league. Hey, yo, Ness. Yo. Midi. Yo. What if... I'm going to say what if for the case, but I believe it personally. Earl Spence has been showing how good he can be. With success, he's allowed success to slow him down in his focus, his sheer determination, sacrifice to the sport. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was going off pure talent for like three or four fights, if you want to call it so. And he managed to become uni unified or have two belts, right? Which is unified. So, after this, he didn't break a bone other than the teeth. A little facial fracture, just a little bit. He comes back and he knocks out Danny Garcia, who is a top welterweight. Who has never been knocked out or wobbled or hurt or significantly like, you know what I'm saying? Wobbles like that. What would be your reaction? What would be your quote My, after uh, the fight? I, I don't know. Like, was to me, you know, I would have picked uh, him before the accident anyway. And quite possibly by a stoppage. I, I don't know, right? Like, so I don't really, you know, pick the uh, method of, like, you know, uh, the win. But I favored him. And I don't see it as, like, a big shock before the accident with, like, Spence stopping Danny Garcia, in my opinion. Although he's saying he hasn't been stopped and everything. But I believe, like, you know, Spence is, like, a, a big enough puncher. And on his day, he can stop people. He dropped Porter. He didn't stop him. But, I, you know, I, I, believe, I believe he could hurt Danny. And, and we're talking I, about that I when have, he fought Porter, he wasn't even, like, in, he, was, he can't. I don't he, know about he, he struggled, that, He right? struggled to make the weight. No, like, he was talking about it. He was like, yo, I, honestly, I made the weight, but I, I wasn't. It was almost like a fat camp I was having. I wasn't. I, ha yeah, I, I, I don't know about all that, but if if what you're trying to get at is that did the accident just made him even more, like, realize even more, you know, like, the blessings that he have and, like, make him even take, like, camp seriously, more seriously, because I believe he was taking it seriously before, then quite possibly, if I go through something like that, I can be telling you for sure that everything that I'll do from that day onwards will be everything done with 100% commitment and everything done with, you know, thanks given to the most high just to for the fact that I'm here, you know. So 100%, I think that will just, like, get his focus even more razor sharp. But I do believe that, you know, he had the edge before that anyway. So, uh, yeah, man, I, I, don't, I don't think the accident is the motiv motiv motivation that he needed uh, or the added edge that he needed to beat uh, Danny Garcia, I would have picked him before, regardless. Ness, what's your two cents, man, before we move on? Nah, I'm with, I'm with Mitty, man. There's nothing to debate there. Like, he was obviously the favorite going into the fight, and uh, this only makes it worse for Garcia, right? Like, Garcia fans are looking at this like, well, we get a, a hurt Spence. We get a Spence off an accident. We get a Spence off of inactivity. You know, uh, so I They think, they think, they think. No, no, it's the truth. We get a, a Spence off an accident. We get a Spence off a year of inactivity. So that's an advantage, Garcia. Uh, but like Mitty and other Earl Spence fans, they were already picking Earl. He was already the favorite. And, 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 and where you can look at the glass half empty and say he's coming off a year layoff, he's coming off of a graphic, tragic accident, you could look at it half full like Mitty or yourself, for, for, for instance, and say he's motivated. 
you know, he's inspired. He's got a newfound belief because of the accident. Like he said in this message, you know, mm -hmm. um, now he has reason to live. He probably was laying in that hospital bed, kicking himself, saying, I'll never do this again. You know what I mean? And that's what he's going out there to do now. Now he's got new added motivation, in my opinion. So uh, it, it, it can work both ways for Garcia. Yeah. This could be dangerous and good. Let, let, let me just add that I don't believe it's just like motivation either. Like, so I, you know, we're not even like, you know, we're not sports people on that level. We're not successful like them. But I know, and I've seen enough like stories that it's very difficult to remain on the right straight and narrow path when you're at the top. There's a lot of distraction that out there. Everything is like easier. You know, even like Manny Pacquiao, like a quiet guy like him fell into gambling, women and all that because you had nothing. All of a sudden you have like the world at your feet and it's easy to get off that straight path. The accident not necessarily just gave him more motivation because going into the fights, I'm sure he had motivation, but it gave him like that focus on, you know, living the right life and not being like led astray by what can just easily derail your career, like excess of women, excess of alcohol, excess of partying, bad people around you. Now he's going to be reassessing all this and he's going to take all that away from his life. And that makes him an even more dangerous fighter, providing that the injuries that it, you know, you know, he picked up in the fight and the inactivity, or in the accident, sorry, and the inactivity don't play a part. Because, listen, the one thing that we don't talk about is that those like the, the scar tissue on his face, how is it going to be, you know, how has it like recovered and healed properly so that when it goes into a fight, is it going to be more susceptible to cuts now? Is it something that's going to be a part of, you know, him fighting in the future, right? So that, those are the things that everyone talks about, like the unknown, not necessarily like, Physically, physically, it could be. All I'm pretty, good, but I'm fine. pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. The scar not, tissues is a problem. Let, let, I'm pretty let, sure let, that he has talked to the doctor, and the doctor is giving him some insights yeah. about what's happening. You know what I'm saying? No, I mean like, the, the doctor will be fine. Like, but when you get like a bad cut, for example, uh, the the doctor will just like stitch you up, do all those no, things. But the doctor will about, always tell you after that, surgery. After surgery, yeah, I, I'm talking about they, that doctor. Yeah, they, they will always tell you that you know there's, like, more chance of this, like, reopening in the future, right? So that, that, that's, the, that's the fact of it, right? So. Yo, so the only thing I don't agree with Mitty is, like, uh, uh, you know, I think you said you, you, don't, you don't think it's motivation. I, I'm going to still go with that because he's been out publicly saying, like, that he's watching the videos, he's watching YouTube, he's listening to people's interview, and he's going to prove them wrong. So it is motivation. He's, he, th he knows that there's people out there, like, like Jessica McCaskill's trainer that are telling people in interviews, this guy's done. I heard through the grapevine he's done. I heard it's a cash out. He's ah, saying that. that uh, okay, I get that point. But those, those haters were there before. Now, now, I'm not saying that Jessica McCaskill's coach was a, was a hater or anything, but people that were criticizing his lifestyle was always there. It's not necessarily the accident, right? So uh, when when you're on this level, on this level, you will have haters. Like, you you say it yourself, eh? you know, you end popping if you ain't got no haters, right? So, he has them, and he had them before that accident, right? Now, I'm pretty sure that you just tell them, like, you know what? The accident just made me focus on life, and then that, that's it. Like, but you're my motivation regardless to, to prove you're wrong, right? Before or after the accident, you know? Yep, yep. So, moving on to, uh, I guess, the juicy, juicy story of the weekend Saturday, I believe, is when this news broke. And, uh, I mean, the gist is one site reporting that the fight between Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury is off, that Wilder allegedly doesn't want the fight uh, due to the bicep injury and needing to rehabilitate, allowing Fury and AJ to move forward for the first quarter I think the date, they even had a date of April for 2021. Then Frank Warren confirms it and uh, says something about it, right? I mean, uh, what does he say? We'll just play it and you decide for yourself. Yeah, then, uh, you know, Tyson 
Quickly ask you about uh, an article we saw in the Mail today saying that Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder, free is off. What can you tell us about that? Well, the situation is, is that he will fulfil all his contractual obligations and he's told me categorically that he wants to fight this year. Uh, I, 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 at the moment, I don't see how the fight's going on with Deontay. Uh, that's, that was, that's, the conver that's the conversation we've had. It was not on, so he... I, I just want to stop there for, obviously, copyright purposes. Shout out BT Sports, uh, or actually IFL. And also say, why is no one releasing the information as to why, allegedly, he doesn't want the fight? He says, those are the conversations we had that he doesn't want the fight. But no one's saying why, but... Like I said, I had to make a stop. Fight, <laughs> and uh, if it doesn't go on this year, then not, uh, you know, But there you go. See, again, he says, if it doesn't go on, you just said you had conversations that said the fight was off, but now you're saying if it doesn't go on. Just saying, contradiction. He basically said knock it on the head. Eh? I don't know. But uh, look, then Shelly Finkel comes out. Well, actually, Bob Arum comes out and confirms this as well. Uh... But then Shelly does an interview with World Boxing News and says that this is not true, that the fight is on and it's happening in December. And, 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 and I don't know where we are with this. Um, why are two parties that have come out in the past and said it was so easy to negotiate with each other and it was the biggest fight and easiest fight to make, it, it seems like there's some issues now. Uh, we're definitely not on the same side of the street if you got Frank Warren and Bob Arum, the promoters of Tyson Fury, saying one thing, and then you have Shelly Finkel, manager of Wilder, saying another. But, gentlemen, what did you think when you heard this craziness? Man, I mean, like, when I heard this, like, you know, we heard speculations before, and you know, I, I read the uh, uh, the Daily Mail uh, article, and you know what stood out to me. I just wanted to understand, just like you, why are they saying that this fight is not uh, is not going to happen, and and Wilder doesn't want to have that to take that fight. And they had like a few, you know, quotes apparently from Deontay in that article, like deep down into the, the article. Uh, and it seemed to me like that it took those quotes from like a, a PBC podcast that Deontay did. So I, I haven't heard that podcast or, or anything, but it seems like uh, Wilder was saying that, you know, he has like a, a, an issue with the bicep. Like, and, you know, I, I don't know if you have like the, the exact quotes, but that's what I took from the article where, you know, from a physical standpoint, it doesn't seem like he's in his most optimum way. So that, that's the one thing straight off the bat that I Which is know, weird uh, to me, right? Up. Which is weird. Let me just interject for this because he's only yeah. done one PBC podcast. It was months ago where he indicated that he was taking the fight. So this article allegedly quotes him on a PBC podcast, but they don't have the audio, right? Yeah, I mean they don't have the it's a, it's an article, right? So they yeah. they don't have the the audio, but they have the quotation mark, right? And this is like a, a newspaper, so you, you you kind of like opening yourself up to like lawsuits, right? You just like you know putting words that aren't so that aren't, that aren't true, right? So and uh, so they they have to have like the right source, and they they will be able or they should be able to to present that information, right? So uh, and. Especially if the fight doesn't happen because of something crazy like that, you know, Wilder can get at them. But the uh, um, the next thing that, you know, came to mind or what I heard uh, from that interview, and that's something that makes sense to me, a contract is not open-ended and open indefinitely. Most of the time you have, it's time-bound, right? So you have like a, a term for this contract and the clauses that you have on rematch have deadline to be met, and uh, it seems like either we are approaching that deadline or either we passed it already, right? And uh, uh, and that's what Frank Warren opened up with, right? He said, Tyson Fury made it clear that he will fulfill his obligation. So his obligation is, to if by a certain to date... Yeah, his contractual... Yeah, his obligation is, if by a certain date... The fight has been confirmed with Wilder to happen in December. Then 
this is the contract you have to take that so he said yes i will fulfill that obligation so, so are we so saying that so are we saying that are we saying that where they where they are get there from from the time from the time that this clause expires this is no longer an obligation for him this is outside of the contract so once that expiry occurs and the fight is not happening in december Fury will seek other opportunity that are outside of that contract that's what i heard from warren right the the, the point that we cannot confirm for sure is what is that expiration date because we right. don't have we're not privy to that contract and that's the question that should be asked to uh warren and aram right so when is the date by which all this should be settled for it to be set in stone for december and if that date doesn't happen does that mean that december, you don't know if it's in december so so wait no, let that, me that's just, a december because, no, guys that's no, a december wait, because you said uh, because we're just going oh, off oh, the fact that oh Tyson francis 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 yeah. francis pump the brakes let me just interject this since he's talking timeline and expiration dates world boxing news got an exclusive with shelly finkel the manager of deontay wilder who was asked this obviously some media sources are stating that the contract for wilder and fury to meet again has expired and World Boxing News revealed that this is not the case according to Shelly Finkel, who said, and I quote, it's simply not true The contract has uh, that the contract has expired. Finkel to World Boxing News Saturday in regards to when the fight will take place. Finkel added, uh, Deontay Wilder is fighting Tyson Fury in December. We are working on the fight. We will update soon. So uh, according to him, the contract has not expired. And this was obviously uh, a direct, um, you know, counter at the article from the Daily Mail. I just wanted yeah, to say I, that. I, and and again, I didn't hear from Frank Warren that the contract has expired either. He said Tyson will fulfill his obligation, meaning that to me it's Sunday that either we're approaching that expiration date like quite fast, or we are getting information that given the circumstances or they are getting uh, information that given the circumstances at this moment in time someone close to wilder or someone who's talking to them about wilder situation is telling them that they won't be fighting within that time frame so therefore they are ready to move on like so th that's what i'm hearing what about this guys yeah. i'm gonna throw the monkey wrench in there right yeah. they've already announced fox pay-per-view earl spence danny garcia Fox pay-per-view. This fight was already Fox and ESPN. Yep. When is the last time you seen two American pay-per-views in the same month? Never. I'm not a I'm not a history guy. Supermax, you 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 seem like that dude, and there's another dude that loves to be right out there. Maybe you can find that information, but I tell you, I can't remember, which is what I like going off my memory. I can't remember the last time we paid for two pay-per-views in the same month, let alone the same network doing two. That's the same network telling their subscribers two middle fingers. Like, hey, I don't care that you paying weekly or monthly. Pay me two times this month for a pay per view. I don't know that we. Can, I don't know that that can happen. And the big fish has announced his date. That is there. I don't know. Like, like I have seen. I believe, um, HBO and then Showtime, in two different months. Right? Didn't Showtime go August twenty eighth with McGregor and then. HBO went like September 15th with Canelo. So I don't know, man. I don't know. That's just a little yeah, monkey wrench. Well, I mean, that, that, that can be an angle, but, but I'm pretty sure that, you know, if that was the case, this is something that will get arranged or negotiated between uh, the two promotional outfits. It's quite easy, right? They will just say, hey, you know what? We're all ready to do that fight. Uh, Deontay's well and fit. Uh, and you guys already said that, yeah, that's fine. You just, you're just going to take that fight. However, we can't do it in December. Let's do that in February because that's when we're going to maximize our return. Yeah. So in January, that's when we're going to mas maximize our return. They're all sensible they people. They will say, yeah, that, that's cool. That makes sense. No problem. Let's shake hand on this and let's announce it. That, that's how that little obstacle can be dealt with. That, that's that's how they should deal with it because 
if, and it would if you're, make if, you're, you're like, if you're both sides, right? If you're Wilder and Fury's team, you're looking at Earl Spence, and you want to use that as a beta. You want to mm-hmm. see how well he does. Him and Garcia in Texas. How many fans? How many new cases occur after that? How far can you push that limit? So I understand why there's no official announcement yet. Um, but that fight with Earl is in December. You can't wait that long to announce the yeah. fight with Wilder Fury. That, that's what it is. Well, one thing I know for sure is that whatever is being said in the media and stuff like that, you have two uh two sets of people that are focused on business right and whether it's business like for you know agreeing that this fight this rematch will the with Deante will take place and then fury already out there in the press saying that you know i'll honor my contractual or obligation that's cool uh so if that's what they want to do they will look at the business aspect of it and then schedule the fight whenever it makes more sense business wise however fury is also looking out for what makes sense to him financially, if within his contract you cannot agree on a date and agree on a fight and set it all up, he's going to say, listen, I'm now out of that contract and I do not have to fulfill that because I waited the amount of time that is allotted in the contract. I'm going to move on to what makes sense financially for myself and what makes sense to him. It seems like they kind of figured out already and Eddie said that a while back that is struck a deal that is agreeable by Fury and by AJ. And they believe that it will make money for both of those guys. They already actually have like a two fight. So why is it so agreeable? Why is it so agreeable for AJ to strike a deal? Hold on to strike a deal with Fury and make it happen. But, but Wilder who have fought him twice before and has done big business twice, can't strike a deal the third time. I don't know because like it's on, on paper. Hold on, hold on. They're having problems um with contract, having problems with date. The last time I checked, Fury had three fights in between their first and second fight. He fought Otto Wallin and he fought um um Schwartz. Tom Schwartz. Tom Schwartz. And then he went and fought in the WWE pay per view event. Three fights, three mm-hmm. different if you want to call it. Before he fought Wilder the second time, why he tripping? We had a pandemic. Things shut down for a while. They're back up and running, but not totally. Like all of a sudden now, we got a date and it's expiring and blah and blah. Like you tripping? Like you already know what it is, Tyson. Stop wow. ducking it, Tyson. That, that, that's like, some sound very like, sound like you quack quacking, like you duck 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 ducking. And I, and I hear you because, yo, yeah, you, you yeah. fight a man that you know and you believe that you can beat him and you can knock him out. Then what you tripping about? You let him uh, come at his best. My man, you are talking like a true businessman out here. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And they will take you seriously with that argument. Like We're talking about what is set in contract versus like what what is like honorable or whatever. He's telling you like, He's telling you. Yeah, exactly. From his, from, from, from his perspective, from his perspective, he's telling you, we fought back in was it February, in the contract, the contract that you would a close that you and your team would have put in there. You said like, if I end up losing, you have a rematch, and that rematch will have to be done by a certain amount of time. And he says, no problem. I will not come out of that agreement. I will fulfill that. So come through and say, we're doing this within the time frame, and that's cool. If it's outside of that time frame, I will pursue other avenues that make sense to me financially. And I have another promoter, a rival promoter, that has come through to me with numbers that I like, you know, knowing what I've already received and all that. They come through with an offer that makes sense to me now that I no longer have that contractual obligation with you. So, so that's all, you know? Yeah. Mitty, I hear what you're saying, but, like, if you look at it, and I hate to do it, but I'm going to have to do it again. Like, I, I, I got to scratch the other side of people's brains so they can just two sides to your brain. And sometimes you only go with the, the, the one side, you know what I mean? And the other side of it, like, for a while, why is it so difficult for people to make, have contract with Deontay Wilder? One, why is it so difficult for people to make contracts with Luis Ortiz? 
Two, why is it so difficult for people to have contracts with Gary Russell Jr.? Like, three, do you want to keep going mm -hmm. with Gary Russell Jr.? But you have certain <laughs> fighters, right? Yeah, just to bring up a few. You have certain fighters that throughout their entire career, it's difficult for them to make matchups. But some fighters, you have other fighters who it's easy. Like AJ can make a fight with anybody else in the heavyweight division except Deontay Wilder. It's no, that's how, that's how that's how right it makes sense. So out of 15 dudes that you could 14 including him would be 15 or the 14 heavyweight it's just business that's just the way things work correct i don't correct. agree i don't agree but i no, hear but you it, but it's okay we, we we're yeah. gonna go on like this for forever right because you know i don't see what the issue is when the guy that has a rematch clause with you is saying no problem the rematch clause is there Activate it, no problem. Let's work that, you know, let's work that fight. And I will fulfill my obligation. When is the date? So that, I, that's it. I, I just listen, can we agree and then move on that it yeah. isn't it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right that this fight isn't announced. A fight that was supposed to take place in December. I agree. I you know, agree I, that it doesn't feel right. If we want, if we want the success, I agree too. If we want the success of this pay per view, it should have been announced. Floyd gave you the blueprint. He always says is everything he says. Uh, if follow his blueprint. Ninety days for promotion. At least six months to ninety days for a big fight to be promoted. And that's why Floyd fought twice a year. But that's my final thoughts on this topic. Yeah, my yeah. final thoughts on this, Mitty. Let me go. My final thoughts on it is like, I, I hear you. My my whole thing is that I, I guess you can call me a little bit like, you know what I mean, spoiled or whatever you want to call it. But I feel like every time Fury mentions a fight, it's not with Deontay Wilder. And I got a problem with that because he got controversy surrounding his win, even though his win was defining in, in, in the way he was pulverizing Deontay Wilder to some who may assume so and some who don't. At the same time, every time Wilder speaks, it's about Tyson Fury. Why isn't Tyson Fury reciprocating the same energy so that this fight can be made? That's my final okay. thought. Okay, so... As far as I hear, I did not hear anything from Fury that says that he's not fighting Wilder, right? His promoter, again, there was an audio that was played there at the beginning that would say he will fulfill his obligation, contractual obligation. And his contractual obligation is with Wilder, meaning no problem. Let's have the rematch. That was always clear from the beginning. Deontay also said he wants the rematch. I'm with Ness. Where, why do we not have a date on that rematch? And there's an aspect that we are not privy to around a clause and an expiration clause for that, for triggering that rematch. If we know the date, and that's the question we should be really, really be asking Frank Warren and Bob Arum. Agreed. When is this actually expire, expiring? And since you say that you're okay to fulfill that, who are you waiting on? Are you waiting on Tim Wilder to let you know that, yes, it's a go or not? Because I'm hearing from you guys that it's a go. So what is the holdup? And those questions are the question that needs to be asked before we can actually, you know, draw a line on this, right? So. Yo, I see, a lot of, I see a lot of fanboys uh, really upset. <laughs> I don't know why people are getting upset because we don't even have, like, all the information, right? No, but so, we're reporting both sides, right? Like, why exactly. wouldn't you report that someone is saying Wilder is out and then his manager is saying that he's not? Do yeah. I not want my listeners to know what's going on? Like, I mean... No, we have to report it's that. Just, we, and that's the problem. The people don't know how to separate the two. It's like, oh, you shouldn't be reporting hey, on this. What the hell? Listen, it's not, it's not just you. The, the conversation is everywhere. Like it's Michael Benson. Exactly. M Michael Benson, all media are just re reporting. It's not tabloid. Like you have like Michael Benson, you have Shelly Finko. Like all those people are people that you can quote directly because uh, Bob Arum, Frank Warren, those are people that yeah. are involved in those two promoters so just, uh on the side and, of fury saying the same thing and we're not gonna 
pay attention yeah, so, to it. Okay. Uh, so I don't know that like, unless we're not here to talk about those things, then like I, I guess like you know we're on the wrong podcast. No, but that's what your your your, your call is for. You know, you voice your opinion. You voice your opinion, man. Get it off All your right. chest. Uh, the Bob Arum quotes. Does anyone have it? Joe Lasisi wants the Bob Arum quote quotes read. All right. Uh, you the, have are it? Those, are have those it. in the... Uh, I, I think I've seen it in the pre in the, in the, No, in the mail, in the Daily Mail one, though. Let me see. I got that one pulled up. Mm, quotes from Aram. Where are we? They did put the link to the PBC podcast. There you go. So... But you would have to go through it. Let me see here. Uh, yeah, gonna take me some time to find them Aram quotes. I don't know. Send me the link, Jola CC. In the meantime, moving on to what do we got here? Canelo and his uh man, the saga that is Golden Boy Canelo and the Zone now. Uh, you know. With this lawsuit, it seems, let me see here, that um, DAZN... Is it, did he say the quotes was by Michael Benson? No, no. The quotes are from Bob Arum. The ones that LaCeci is looking you, for. You, you had a tweet from Benson in there. Yeah, and I believe, like, Benson... I got that got, one, too. Yeah, yeah. Benson, Benson, Benson retweeted Benson, the Frank Warren he's quoting, uh, audio. He's quoting Aram, though. I think he's quoting Aram also in, in the Benson one. Let me check his Twitter. Yeah, I got I got it right here. It oh, says great. Bob Arum has confirmed their plan is now for Tyson Fury to fight in the UK in December, then face Anthony Joshua in April or May in 2021. When asked about Deontay Wilder's rematch clause, Aram said the only thing that can prevent Fury versus AJ is a loss in December. Mm. So a loss in December, he didn't, and, and, and that's and that's from the, either. but that's from, the thing, from AJ or exactly, from, uh, from Fury, exactly, but Fury doesn't have like a fight, exactly. So. That's my thing. That's the 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 cunningness of the author. <laughs> you know, it's open ended. There, it's like, is he talking about AJ suffering a loss versus Pulev, or does he mean Wilder Fury actually happening in December and and Fury losing uh, to to Wilder is the only way? So it's just yeah. I don't know, like that. That quote is not clear enough, and exactly. you know we have snippets of those. Like, so it's it would be better to get those guys directly if we can, right? And just like ask them, like, hey, let's be clear about our statement when you talk about a loss in December. What loss are you talking about? Fury to Wilder? If is the Wilder fight happening? Uh, are you talking about AJ to to Pulev, or you know? What kind of like fights are you gonna? Um, is Fury gonna get in December if he's not getting Wilder? Like, so you have a warm up oh, fight you, for you him. You know what there? kind of fight? But, the, the, but uh, the thing about it is that you know what kind of fight Fury takes in between. Come when on. When they asked him, when they asked him about Deontay Wilder, his response was whether you know what I'm saying he didn't really have a response about Wilder at all, at all. He pretty much dismissed Wilder. He really yeah, talked about so so what... versus AJ. Again, like, so Finkel, I guess, will give us the, the response for Wilder or if, you know, if somehow we can get Wilder on the uh, on the, on the the show or even, like, a quote for him, yes, he's the one who want, just say that, you know. The people want you to call Finkel. Get him on the line. Bro, I've been trying to get Finkel on the interview for six months, man. It, 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 it's not happening. But listen, uh, moving to the Canelo situation... Uh, seems that DAZN media files notice for Canelo's lawsuit to return to federal court. Uh, you know, DAZN is obviously one of the defendants' name in Alvarez's ongoing lawsuit filed a notice of removal to federal court seeking to have the case once again heard in the United States District Court, Central District of California. The law firm of Frank Furt and uh, Kernit Klein. So, they want this back in the district court, and it's now in federal court. So all I know is that this means more time, 
more time because, you know, that motion to have it brought back down has to be heard before you can move forward. Like, because now, you know, it's being questioned of whether or not I could stay in federal court. This for Canelo just means more time out of the ring. Um, but, hey, I guess, you know, when you're that rich, you know, look, dudes with less money have sat out for the very same reasons, trying to get out of a contract. So, you oh, know, yes, they have. For, for, for Canelo, mm -hmm. if you got to sit out two years for Canelo, he's only 29, right? Or he just turned 30. You know, if you got to sit out two years and spend some of your multi, multi million dollars, go ahead. You know, um, I understand, like I understood Floyd wanting to get out, Oscar wanting to get out, Cotto wanting to get out, you know, everybody. Mikey. Mikey, everybody who had to do it. The hard way, you know, I understood it. So, uh, you know, even Ward, bro, Andre Ward, you know, Andy, his was bad. Andy had to get buyout too. Yeah, I mean, but Andy's was a little different. He kind of got hooked up, right? It wasn't like, even though you're right, you're right. He had, he had to, to get, get he had he to get bought out because he was him. just sitting. He was just sitting. You know, he got blessed to get the money from out to get out, and then he got active. Then he really got blessed with a with a with a with a, with a magnificent win. So, yeah, man. I mean, this is just the dirty, dirty side of boxing for Canelo. It sucks. Because, you know, he's one of the faces and uh, boxing is very fickle. I say it all the time. So it's more like, what have you done for me lately? And, you know, uh, out of sight, out of mind. So if he's out of sight, mm. he's out of mind. He's going to drop from pound for pound rankings. He's gonna not, he's not going to be talked about uh, as big fights. It's always going to be is when he's coming back. Is he coming back? Can he come back? Who is he going to be with? Everything will be hypothetical. Because of that, this, that, that's the sad thing about this, right? So and lawsuits like that. But like the the only thing about these articles, like <laughs> the the updates, I am not law uh, any law expert, especially like U U.S. law. It's very like you know tricky with the different like courts that you have. But what I what I read, and you know I read a tweet that came out and said, "Oh, the zone strikes back with a power move." And so I said, "Okay, let me try to understand what that power move is." Uh, but reading through all I saw, or what I saw, seemed to be like the zone picking holes in, like the case being put forward by uh, Alvarez team, right? And things that seem to be avoidable, like clerical issues in terms of understanding. The legal entities that are at stake and where they are located, and under what law uh, this will be, uh, you know, this can be judged because of those entities and you know uh, the, the the kind of like jurisdiction that they covered under. So to me, uh, I don't know. It seems like the Zones team has lawyers that, at least, like you know, I don't, I don't even want to use that word because I, I don't actually. No, 100%, but they seem on the face of it, on the surface of it, more competent than the uh, uh, the lawyers that have put, like, the case forward by the Alvarez team, right? Because, you know, if you're filing a lawsuit that needs to be updated within two, uh, two weeks because you did it wrong in the first place, then you do it a second time, and then the, the, people, the, the people that, you know, are uh, supposed to defend against that lawsuit point out that actually you filed a complaint to the wrong court, then it shows to me, like, you know, I don't know what's going on with, like, uh, Alvarez's team, and is he going to get mad at his, at his own team for making this last longer than he should? Because he doesn't want to be out of the ring that long. That That's the that's the truth of it. I, I hope that they settle this out of court because I, I want to see Canelo in fights, you know, soon. There's some good fights to be made. Like we talked like the other week only, like about the Charlo fights. And so I'd like to see those fights. That'll be good for both guys, Canelo and Charlo. And, you know, I don't want to be here talking about like court cases. And I've got, you know, really no real information to talk about those cases, you know. So, well, that. the only thing I know about law, I'm going to tell you right now, is like, you know, I mean, a few people that I know that are lawyers, but I, ha I have a friend. I have a friend that's a multimillionaire, and he got in a situation where he's kind of like in real estate. So he got in a little bit of like a like a dispute over a property with another person who is a multimillionaire. But that person got, you know what I mean, he got more money. Mm. He looked at him and said, listen, 
the reason why rich people go to court is because we got money to stay in court as long as we want to. We're going to win. It's big bank take little bank. You understand what I'm saying? So Canelo's sitting back like, yo, I'm trying, I'm going to win this situation. I got enough money to just chill and, and, and wait this situation out and get the proper paperwork and everything sorted out. You know what I mean? I felt like I did wrong. I'll spend the money because I know I'm going to make it back. I, I don't think I don't think he he if he was in that type of situation, he would have been settled or he would have been, you know, what I mean, wanted to get the situation away. But I feel like he got strong evidence to back up his case. Mm -hmm. And that's why he's continuing to just dig deeper, even when they, you know, they try to throw it out. He, you know, refiles an appeal again. Like you're not looking at it right, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? You're not seeing it the way you're supposed to. So hey, I'm happy he's doing what he got to do, man. He's from a sporting it. point of view, do you think like for him, at least from a fan point of view, that that's not good for him to hear that he's happy to sit how long, however long, you know, this is going to take, especially if it takes like, no, but you know, it, a, a long time, right? So I, I think and from what, a sporting point of view for himself, I don't think that's the best thing because what's going to happen when he comes back after, let's say, a year and a half, for example, what is he going to say? Like, oh, that's what I'm saying. Inactivity, inactivity killed him or whatever. In, right? Inactivity is not good for no fighter, exactly. for no athletes or no thoroughbred, so to speak. Inactivity is not the greatest thing for um, that individual, whether male or female. Um, and I feel like, yeah, it's going to bother him. But being that top athlete that he is, he'll overcome that mentally. It's a more of a mental thing, right? Because if you got injured and you were out for a year and a half, two years with act inactivity, that was inactivity that was involuntary. Like, you didn't volunteer. It just happened to you. You know what I'm saying? Versus a situation where this, you understand what you're looking at. You know what you're dealing with. You know what I mean? You're not getting the fights, but you're kind of staying in the gym. Gives you an opportunity to rejuvenate your body and maybe your mind. Maybe get into some things you never really wanted to while you wait this out. And knowing that you still got some type of career because you're young. Oh. Let me you know, let me let me throw old. a little twist, right? Because a he's still in the gym, and b uh, there was an extension given for the yeardom Canelo uh, vacant title fight. So WBC granted an extension for that. So somebody knows something. And, they know that they probably will settle, right? And yeah. and I want to say that. Federal court is the big dog, right? Like, remember, you know, uh, in America... Hold on, Ness, hold on. Sorry, sorry. Say that again. Who granted an extension? WBC. The, yeah. Granted who an extension? Yeardrum. Yeah, because a champion can can apply for an extension um, for a voluntary uh, defense. Or, sorry. Well, he's for, not a champion. It's a vacant title. Yeah, it's a yeah. vacant title. But he, being, I think he's the number one contender. Canelo will be number two, right? I mean, Canelo's franchise, so, you know, if they, the, I, all I'm saying is they've granted that extension in the hopes that Canelo is available to do that fight. So somebody must know something or wishfully, hopefully thinking, I don't know. But look, you know, this is, this is the quickest topic to get through. It, it, it's sad for any fighter to go through this. You know, I hate it when Ward went through it. But we know mm -hmm. that, that, that there, there's always greener pastures for the fighter once they get out of that situation. Every fighter that's, that's gone through this has come out of it on the other side doing so much better. So, you know, it is what it is for Canelo. He'll, he'll, he'll either settle this and be where he wants to be or get out of this and still be where he wants to be. Um, I think what we have next is some fantastic news Mitty, I guess you should fill us in on who exactly Jack Cottrell is so I don't just breeze past him because he is the mandatory to one of these titles. I want to say maybe he's to the, the... WBC. Okay, so he's Jose Ramirez is mandatory, but he's chosen to step aside. But there's so much more to this, and I want the listeners to really see what we have going on because this is a first of its kind. Usually, you know, we see this from a promoter but mtk global is like a management company and what they've been able to do here for josh taylor who's also mtk global is get a stablemate to step aside to allow an undisputed with the right to fight the winner which is what we were saying for another division and another conversation and this is just 
kind of one of those moments where you got to thank the boxing gods, as Info Joe would say, because Jack Cottrell didn't have to be a stand-up dude. He could have said, F that, I want my shot. Uh, MTK Global didn't have to try to give him step-aside money if it took money because we don't, Ness, we don't have the Ness, details. Go ahead. I got to tell you, though, just to interject right there where you just said, we talked about it before with the whole um, Jamel Charlo and um, uh, we had him on. What's his name again? Uh, Jamel Charlo, WBO champ from Brazil. Patrick Tixeria. Tixeria. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the mandatory, which is Castano, if he agrees to step aside, Mel also has Lubin as his WBC mandatory. Who is going to get the first shot? Now, in this situation with Cattrall, Josh Taylor ag- assured him that you will get the first opportunity at the, 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 all the belts. But, you should- still, but there's still the IBF, the WBA out there and the WBO who do have their own mandatories. But this so, is usually so, how, you know, step aside would work, right? So, you you know, sometimes like someone can step aside just for monetary value and that's all. But like in this um, kind of scenario, that makes no sense for Catrol just to step aside and get like monetary value, which he will get anyway. Right. And then get nothing at the end of it. Like, so to make it, to make sure that he agrees to that is just to say, hey, you know what? You have a shot at the winner like but I, actually i don't know if it's at the shot at the winner regardless it's the shot at taylor i believe right so uh yeah, well I, and, I i got what ta- i got what what taylor told him back yeah. pulled up let me just uh get to that sorry about it um yeah. so taylor says to him uh let's get it on can't wait for this Huge. Big up to my teammate, Jack Cottrell, for agreeing to step aside and let this massive fight happen. 100% you get your shot after I whoop Ramirez's ass. So, yes, it's open-ended. Uh, it's open-ended like the Castano Texuria, but, but we are not making up hypothetical conversations about it's this. It's not. It's, this it's is real. real one. It's this within is, the same management company. And, and, and that's the difference. Let me just say that. Yeah. Let me show them the connection. So Lubin, right, who his team, his, his coach did say, yeah. You heard his coach. His coach on our show definitely said, hell yeah, if he want to fight Tech Sharia, Charlo is the man. He said that. And we'll let okay. and, and he could do that and we'll fight Williams or her. And he said not on the undercard. Remember, we we talked to him. So they team okay. they team okay. will do it, but this is the issue that and this is what we gotta highlight. This is a new management company. You know, we gotta pay attention to what's happening. Right now, David McWaters and Split Team Management are taking over. And MTK Global is emerging in the United States and they're making some noise. Truck Simpson just fought on a fucking top rank card. Pay attention to what's happening. Truck Simpson was a PBC fighter. We had Calvin Ford on ESPN the other day. So all I'm saying is I want to highlight MTK Global being able to talk to their team. They did what hasn't happened for Charlo yet. Ain't nobody go talk to Lubin and Castano yet. They didn't do that. MTK Global did that for Josh Teller, so let's stick with that, highlight that, because more people need to do that. More people need to push and negotiate for their fighter to be, you know, in the best situation, because undisputed can't happen all the time. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, th- th- this is what it is. This is the power of, like, being associated with a force that is growing and that is already well established actually like the connections that they have are quite strong uh they've demonstrated right they, they manage like big fighters and their links with top rank is undeniable right so uh and being able at least in the uk right they able to just like scoop a lot of fighters they're happy to work with most manager uh, most promotion out, uh, promotional outfit they get on well with like matchroom and they get some of their fighters shots on those uh, uh, on those shows. Some of their fighters are promoted by matchroom. Some of their fighters are promoted by uh, Queensbury promotion. 
And like I said, on the in the US, I'm sure they'll take the same approach, right? They'll go with multiple promoters, but their stronger tie is definitely with top rank, which means that, you know, fights like the, the Taylor Ramirez is easy to make. And with them in the middle mediating all this and just, have, you know, finding a solution to that catch-all uh, Ramirez mandatory for actually the WB or not the WBC uh, is a, uh, you know, is an advantage, and that's you know that that's the advantage of being with big boys, I guess. You know. Yeah, um, man, I was gonna say something again, but whatever. <laughs> but, 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 let you, you though, but let me tell you though. Right. But let me tell you though. But let me tell you though. Maybe it's a jargon, man. But let me do tell you though. The WBC do have a regulation that gives them the WBC an opportunity to ask the fighter to step aside. As well as the fighter can ask his mandatory two step aside. So the WBC can put a rule in place saying that this fight, on whatever grounds, is a big enough fight, like a unification or undisputed. And Castano would have no opportunity, he would have no choice to step aside or anybody that has a WBC um, and has a mandatory the WBC, that mandatory would have to step aside. No, Just unification drunk. takes precedence over uh, over mandatories, like. But not for all. Regardless. But not for all. But not for all. Um, it's not that easy for all governing by sanctioning bodies. Some have really? to rule in place, and some have to like come to an agreement, like a vote type of deal. Mm, okay, I, 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 you know, I didn't know that. I thought like pretty much like it was standard across all nah, like governing body, right? So. Nah, because sometimes okay. even we're talking about it. Sometimes the the the, the promoter has to, you know what I mean, kind of come up with the, the step-aside money for the, the mandatory so that they can get on whatever fight it, it, it is. Sometimes it's a unification. Sometimes it's just a, a, a involuntary fight, right? Yeah, uh, coming, co coming up with the money is not the problem. Like, you know, it's never going to be like the, the governing... The governing body's role to come up with the the money, but I was I was pretty sure that you know, in the rules in general, regardless of your governing body, unification takes precedent over mandatory for that specific governing body. But you know, I might be wrong, right? Maybe there are some uh, no, governing because, body that, that do that. You know, so no, because you got to remember something. Now it comes down to who, how do you rank the the governing the sanctioning bodies? Who 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 carries the bigger weight? Because Everybody got mandatories and stuff, right? So if so, if you got two or three sanctioned bodies for whatever reason, call it mandatory, and they kind of fall within the same time frame, like um, yeah, you decide to drop whatever you want. You know, you decide to drop whoever you want. But I, I don't think drop like, whatever belt. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I think like there should WBO. be a deal in place where you don't have to drop your belt and still be able to fulfill all your obligations. That's what I I'm trying to say. I believe that that exists. Like but, that's but, what I'm saying. Unification exists. Like for you know, right? That rule some, exists for unifications. But. but some sanctioning bodies, they just believe that it. You know, they fighter has been waiting for X amount of days, and you know, what I mean, they got to get their shot. Yeah, I, 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 my, I just want to see the day where unifications, Trump mandatories, really happen. You know what I right. mean? People <laughs> always say, and I'm using air quotes. I know this is a podcast, <laughs> you know, but people always say unifications, Trump mandatories, but, but but we always see the situation be financial, like where someone needs money. And and even if the WBC has a rule that they can ask whoever Ramirez's mandatory is to step aside, that guy can still say no. So then Ramirez's team has to pay step aside fee. Like, it's just that simple. You know, and, and, and listen, this is a business, you know, whoever that guy is, 100%. he needs to think about it. Like, damn, do I take this 75,000, 100,000, whatever that number is. But keep in mind, what was he getting paid to fight, to actually fight and go through a camp? You know what I mean? So sometimes they take that money like Victor Postal did two times. Hundred you percent. Know? But like, uh, yeah, for financial financial is not even a discussion, right? Whatever happens, whether it's like the governing body getting something, fighters to step aside getting something, hundred percent. Whatever makes sense financially is what will uh, is what will happen, right? So mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just Absolutely. I'm just thinking about I'm just thinking about like if me like if if the three of us, okay. Ness, you the you the mandatory for the WBC. Midi, you the mandatory for the WBO. I'm the mandatory for the IBF, right? And we get down to it, and we all like, yo, we need a shot. 
I've been waiting X amount of days. I want, I, you know, let's get I need my shot. Yeah, but, we're not, but that's the thing. We're not all going to say that, especially once the news breaks that we all got the mandatory and, and, and that we're, it's all going to be called. Like, managers are going to sit us down and say, all right, well, look, yo, Francis is a big puncher. Let him go fight uh, whoever your champion in this hypothetical is. And let's see that what happens. Let's take that step aside money because Francis and Mitty are the two biggest punchers. Let them fight each other or let them go through a battle. Let them get one more tough fight. We get this check. We get more camp. We work on more things. We take us a, a fight in between. Dog, a lot gets talked about. So it, we can't just all, like, I, I doubt that all three are going to be like, nah, I'm not taking step aside. I want my shot. Someone ain't going to, because think about it. How many mandatories this year have happened have have they won? Who who's won? Who's the mandatory? Right, like who's been a mandatory and has he won? Dylan was a mandatory. He ain't get his shot. Uh, oh, King Pong was his name. Mitty, we just seen him. He had the big record. Kung Song, Kung Song, Kung Song Kung got Song. his yeah, shot. The got the tie guy. That's he he got around. knocked out. Like, give me some mandatories yeah. that really. Not every mandatory is created equal is all I'm saying, you know. That's compost compost got slept. So sometimes taking step-aside money for a mandatory means a fucking a down payment, 20% on a house. You know what I'm saying? Or, or depending where you live, <laughs> Detroit, Ohio, you might just pick up a whole house for, for, for one check, you know. So, <laughs> you know, listen, you got to do what's right. You got to do what's right. But, uh, yeah, man, I mean, if those are your final thoughts, that's definitely mine. We got as well to speak of um, the BT. Actually, since we're on Ramirez, that's top rank. Let's talk top rank fights. Uh, Joseph Adorno's card was off. But on that card, uh, we did have Emmanuel Navarrete defeating Ruben Villa uh, to win a vacant WBO uh, World Featherweight title. And now Navarrete is a two-division world champion and wants a shot at Josh Warrington and something tells me this fight is gonna be made easier than the Shakur fight, but Navarrete is just as dangerous from a puncher standpoint. Where Shakur is dangerous, you know, from, from a puncher punches. and yeah. and and technical standpoint. But I think that Warrington will look at this like, I'm going in there with a two-time Mexican. You know, they look at the financial. They're looking at what he brings, even though that's downplaying Shakur. I believe Shakur in Madison Square Garden or in the Prudential Center, they can sell it out. And Shakur was willing to go to Leeds to fight Warrington anyway. So I'm, I'm saddened for Shakur, but I feel like Bob is going to be able to get Navarrete warrants and unification uh, done. I, I believe that yeah. too. And, and listen, so. if, if this is happening in in Leeds and we're allowed to have crowds back and everything, you can be sure that they're fighting in front of like 20,000 plus, right? Like uh, Warrington, like, you know, brought that type of crowd against like Lee Selby. And Lee Selby didn't like, bring much fans all that way, right? So they, those were all like the Warrington, uh, the Warrington fights, uh, fans. But man, that's a that's a good fight, and I think like Navarrete actually, I you know I give him the edge over Warrington because I Warrington is like all pressure, uh, but he will get hit by Navarrete, and I what I can tell is that Navarrete is a puncher, is a real puncher. I, I liked what he did uh, yesterday. I don't believe he was in there with someone who was just yet on that level level you know what i mean like i i get that the guy is good is a decent boxer he's slick uh but when once he felt that power you know he didn't want to know right he didn't want to get involved too much with warrington and i don't blame him uh, uh sorry with navarrete uh, and I, I don't blame him but he didn't show me like when he knew that he was losing that fight that he wanted to actually walk through fire you know that this is your world title shot you know that you're down on the cards and you didn't show me like that kind of like ambition to say, you know what, like I have to go for it. And, you know, but again, like, what do I know? I'm not in there in the ring with him getting punched by a guy that is very loose, very unorthodox, punched like from very strange angles and gets you, tags you <laughs> and hurts you. So, 
Yeah, man. Like, so I, I liked what Navarrete did. He was in control and he did his thing. And like I said, I think he beats Warrington. So, yeah. Yeah, I didn't hear none of you guys didn't say, you know what I mean, Ness or, or, or Media, you guys didn't say the reason why they want this fight because they don't want to fight a slick, uh, a slick black fighter like Shakur Stevenson with the style and skills that he has. You know what I'm saying? That's that's high risk, low reward. You know what I'm saying? Fight yeah, but that, that's the hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Shakur's the best. That's not low reward. That's not low reward. That's not low reward. Shakur's the only dude that during the pandemic got four hundred thousand for a tune up. No, no, sir. And he's he sells. He's not low reward. That's that's false. But they're narrative. looking at the reason false why I'm saying narrative. low reward. The reason why I'm saying low reward is because Josh Warrington, after seeing the fight this past weekend and the fights before with Navarrete, he knows he can touch him. The problem is he don't got no power. There's people saying that Navarrete. Right. There's people saying that Navarrete won't take the. I mean, that that Warrington won't take the fight the way he didn't were, take the Shakur fight, and then instead he's no. gonna try and unify with the WBA I, regular, I, I who's, who, who Golden fight. Boy no, is trying. Let me just get the, the information out. Uh, there's people who saying that he's not gonna take the fight with Navarrete. Instead, continuing the talks and negotiations that were ongoing between him and Can X. Of Golden Boy, who's the regular WBA, but is is petitioning to be uh, upgraded to super champion. So isn't that fight already made though? Uh no, not that I know of. No, no. I, I thought I thought it was, but but I mean, like that, that that's okay. Like, listen, like Francis. Yeah. No one, no one is going to argue with you. At least I am not going to argue with you that Shako is the man. Like it, when you put all those three names in the mix. I'm never gonna go against you to say like you know hey, Shako is not is not gonna come on top. I believe Shako is the real deal. Like you know, skill wise, even like I, I don't know about power wise, but I think like he punches like hard enough at this uh, at this weight. Yeah, like you oh know, yeah, he punches hard at uh, this weight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you know, but I also believe that there are bigger things for him to do. <laughs> moving all the way up anyway, Shako. I think Shako will be good at 135, you know. All right, put like this down so the line, right? I'm just Mini, hold on, hold on, Mini, not to cut you. Josh Warrington's uh, box rec, just because people are saying that he's already unifying. He is not unifying. He doesn't have anything here scheduled on box rec, and box rec usually even has No, be, ca be, be careful. There, there are fights that are confirmed for, or that were confirmed for last week that were not on box rec, like, even two days before the, those fights, right? So Yo, uh, okay. I don't know what's have been ha what has been happening with box rec lately, but they, they're not all up to date on those fights, and they add some very, very late, you know? Now, Midi, look how, look how the WBO did... Did uh, my man Jamel Heron dirty? Okay, check this out. Now I know it's all about oh, rankings. Oh, and, and oh, we gotta, we gotta, we got. Damn, I mean that's one of the topics. <laughs> that, I, that's got, topic, I got it as one of the one of the notes, but fuck it, oh. bring it up, bring it up, bring up the facts right. though. Bring yeah. up the facts first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead, go over the facts. Uh, so WBO <laughs> approves Jamel Heron versus Carl Frampton. The winner must face Shakur Stevenson in ninety days. And that's what I'm now, saying. Now, there are bigger up. fights out there, right? So yeah, that's what Shakur. I'm trying to say. But look how they did him dirty. Like, Shakur has been hunting down Josh Warrington. Like, yo, give me that fight. Anybody in this weight class, give me that fight. And then, you know what I'm saying? You heard Jamel just want to fight um, um, Carl Frampton. Now they're like, you know what? Let's throw Jamel to Shakur. Let's keep him away from Warrington. Like, them type of stuff I'm well, talking but, about. But, like, but wait a minute. But wait a minute. Who's to say that Carl Frampton isn't going to be Jamel Heron? He's the, what, two, three-time yeah. division champ? And he ducked yeah. it. But look, Chikur wanted to fight and, him, too. And, and, true. and, and, and said, let, no. me, let me say this. What, let me ring the bell. <laughs> Shout out MTK, who got Frampton this fight. Think about it. If you're Frampton, yeah. if you're Frampton, this, this fight fans out there that think you're done. They think you're at the end of your career, but your management company is able to solidify you another world title shot. Whether you lose and you retire after, that's okay. They did their job. So I'm saying. I go saying. on a limb. I think he beats uh, Jamal Herring, you know. So. Ooh, you think, you know, he, you think I, I, he has more yeah, power from, than Herring? I think, from, I think Frampton beats him, you know. But do you think he has more power than Herring? Mm hmm. Yeah, he so has I good do. powers. I don't know if he has more powers than him. But I do. I've seen him hit. I've seen he's Joshua moving up, some body shots. Guys, he's moving up like two divisions. He is. He is. But like, I, I believe like 
Pairing is a good style for him, you know. Mm. And I believe, you know, it will put like you know that kind of like pressure on him going from head to body, you know. So, did you always you know. believe that, or did that happen more after this last fight? No, no, I always Orlando, that, you know? uh, I, I'm like a, I'm a Frampton believer, Jonathan, right? So you know, what was his name, Jonathan Aquendo? Aquendo, yeah. But but so you're saying it wasn't? It was no, always, it wasn't that. It was it, always, it you were always picking yeah. him. I always believe that. Yeah. But but you are from from France, but raised yeah. in the UK. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like that, that. I don't think that comes into play. Like you know, earlier I, I mean, told you're, you that you're I raised pick, in the I, UK. I'm, I'm picking Navarrete over Warrington, right? Nah, so you're that, right. that you're argument right. finishes. Right. Right. No, there. I know. I can't. I can't yeah, pigeonhole you. Should both of them? I can't pigeonhole you. hundred percent. Should both of them? Hell yeah! Hell yeah, bro. Shakur is the next one. Shakur is the next one. Listen, Shakur. Is already Same saying he wants to fight Tank. Like it ain't none of that friendship shit with him. He wants yeah. the best. He's got that Bud Crawford mentality, but he got a team that looks like they're gonna be able to get it done for him. But, I believe that. Yeah. But I it's questionable. It. It's questionable. I was there. I was feeling like they were gonna get it done for him because as soon as he got that championship uh, over over Joette Gonzalez, whose win is looking a lot better now after he just got a win over uh, Miguel Mariaga, really beating him up. Um, I thought they were going to be able to solidify that unification and he was going to be able to make history by being unified within 14, 15 fights. Uh, so that would have been something special for him. They didn't get him that Warrington unification. So we got to see what the team does next to solidify his history and legacy. But I think he's going to do that. Make history, man. This kid looks very good, man. Very, very good, you know. Uh, we'll see, though. We'll see what happens. Um, what else are we talking here? You, you, We knocked out two in one, so we're almost yeah, done, I guess. Those are quick ones. Those are quick ones. But did we actually review any fights or we, we yeah. reviewed? Yeah, we, we, like, we, we spoke about the Navarrete and the Ruben video. Villa. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can, we can yeah. get more in depth. Uh, for, for me, um, you know, I didn't believe people the way that they believed in Ruben and I'm, I'm with you. I don't think he was on this level. He was decent and very confident until he felt that first uppercut. And, Mm. you know, you just can't account for an awkward guy. Everybody Mm. that's been in there with an awkward guy knows they're just, they're just tough to deal with. And that's what Navarrete is. And he doesn't really get too tired, man. He keeps throwing those was, punches. Hey, you see how relaxed he is? Like, relaxation is key. Like, he, you know, he, he can't get tired. And that fight, I believe he, will he was get in stopped, third gear. He, he, he fought that whole fight in third gear. I think someone honest. stops now at it. They're like, Shakur stops him with a counter. He Thank you. Uh-huh. Thank you. I've been waiting to say that. He's lunging every time <laughs> to cut this. Like, I love his fight style because he's the guy that you don't have to say, cut the distance. Like, he's changing. Changing from orthodox to southpaw just to cut the distance, but someone that is skilled, like Shakur, who's a division above him now, luckily, they're going to continue to keep him away. Sharpshooters will get him. Absolutely, man. Listen, same card, same card, and I'm not trying to rush. Way wide open. uh, Same card, and I'm not trying to rush, but Elvis, when he, the way that, like, that's what Shakur is going to do. The way that Elvis countered with the hook, and then all, um, automatically stepped around, but it was it was unnecessary because the opponent was done, you know. And sharp guys are that. Now they're gonna keep Navarrete away from that, you know. If somehow he becomes a draw, then they'll push him towards Shakur because every Mexican needs that slick black fighter. You can't be but, a champ without fighting one. But you know what we don't know though is the impact of that that punching power because like. You know, if Villa is all that people said he was before, like people who knew him, like definitely, like you said before, the punching power made him like reevaluate everything there, right? So, yo, yo, and, Midi, yo, go ahead. And you can never account for that, and you can never quantify that before you see two people in the ring. So, I believe hundred percent that Shakur is the guy. Shakur beats him. Shakur, but the one thing that we don't really know is like. If Navarrete has really that, like, those rocks, like he said, in his gloves and he really hits him, who knows what can happen there. Like, but that's the only thing I could see that could happen. But well, yeah, you know, Mini, that, that's reaching there. I'm reaching. Mini, yeah. Check it out. Navarrete in, in 33 fights got 27 knockouts. In 32 wins, he got 27 knockouts. So he got decent punching power, man. That's almost 80%. 
punching yeah, power, so. 79, 80% punching power compared to like Josh Warrington in 30 fights, only got seven knockouts. So what are we saying differently here? Like, no, I'm, yeah, I'm agreeing with you. I'm just adding facts to what you're saying that, oh, yeah, right. he definitely got rocks in them hands, if he, in them gloves or in his hand if he's punching. Nah, he got, he got power, kill. bro. If you seen the way Villa looked up, <laughs> you know, after being hit with that uppercut, he got power, bro. He got power. And it's effortless. Like, you know, the, the most relaxed people and those are the ones that would really hit you and you'll feel it. Like, relaxation is okay. Boom, and it just gets you. Hmm. Ness, I'm mad, though. I'm mad. He blew my ticket, but it's all good. Let's move on to uh, Elvis Rodriguez getting another stoppage. Um, Cameron Carell, we, I thought I didn't know him till we seen him in the ring. The guy with the tattoos. Obviously, we know him. Hard-nosed dude. Never been stopped. Uh, I don't think, or only stopped once, right? And just got stopped. So, you know, shout out to Elvis, man. Uh, you definitely can see that he's just not um, a puncher. He's more than that. Uh, you know, you got to give Freddie that credit. They're developing him very good over there. Um, you know, I, I, I love the right hook. He, he put so much talk into that. You know it was bad intentions. Mitty, as a coach, bro... His, his feet kind of got in the air because he, you know, I seen Tiafimo do that too to De Magdaleno when he when he threw the lefty. They, they're, like, they're like jumping. It's, they're like jumping into it. Even Tank does that. And I'm like, fuck, man. Yeah. They're putting so it's much a, emphasis on it. It is is the gazelle punch, right? Like, so when you just close the distance at the same time, I listen, it's not recommended and advised. Usually do that when you have a dude in front of you that you know is not going to come back with a sharp counter or anything, or a dude that is already hurt, so you can make all those scenes and everything. But usually your feet off the ground is a good recipe for you getting on the floor with a good counter because you have nothing to balance yourself. Even like a shot that is not as hard as it should be because your feet are off the ground, they will shift you because you have nothing to counterbalance and all that. So uh, you do that. You can do that against like you know sitting ducks and people that are already hurt. And those guys know when they do that. Like so, but you know he, he's powerful and he's good. I like. So he's only game. been stopped twice. Cameron has, and the last time he was stopped looks like where is it? Wow. Okay, that was. 2014 man so you know they put him in there with someone that was supposed to give him rounds and he bodied him and we have on that resume I'm going to screen share this because uh, this is Cameron's resume and we got a few Eastern European names on here that have beaten even Keith Hunter the welterweight uh, you know he's got that bloodline that pedigree uh, the Hunter family Michael Hunter's brother um you know, Eric Bonet is another name we know. Uh, Maurice Lee, another name we know. Aegis Cavalaskis, another name we know that got a decision win. So uh, Alex Martin, another name we know. So guys that we know got in there. And DR, baby! Don't get too hype, but get fucking hype. Don't get too <laughs> hype, but get hype. I mean, he's really looking like we got one. It's so spooky right now. Yo, I think you got one. This you know, is I crazy. Think <laughs> and it, I think and so it, too. And, I it, and it looks like this dude's going to be in a title shot next year. Yes, I said it's, it. It's possible I the way it. he's moving, for sure. I said it. And, 140, and you can't really, he's coming. 140, you, you, he's coming. I'm telling you, this is crazy. It's, wow. You can't really just like stop that progression, especially when he's on in the public eye the way he is, right? So people will start demanding, demanding. And that's like, like you said, this is the road for right. title shot towards the end of next year. You know, so. he's already on the on the bud card as the co-main, huh? Dior stand up and mm -hmm. back hours. The Washington Heights, Dykeman, let's go. The whole BX, I, yo, listen, <laughs> listen, co-main of ready, co-main. <laughs> Yo, yo. He said, thank man. Thank man. Let's go. <laughs> yo, let's go. Stand up. Boston, Massachusetts. Let's go. Yo, PA. Let's go. Are you going to lose in Boston? Yo, we strong in Rhode Island. Let's go. Where we at? We better. Yo. Uh, let's do it. Yeah. Let's go. Hey, I, 
Listen, I love the heights, man. Like, Yo, I, you know, I never had I one, bro. Yo, this would be, I would be lucky enough because I, I wasn't old enough to watch Joan Guzman's entire career, bro. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, if I could watch this kid be a champ and be like, yo, that's that's what I'm talking. I mean, don't get me wrong, we got to do it with Juwan, Jonathan Gun Guzman, but 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 he lost that IBF pretty quick. You know what I mean? This guy looks like he could be on pay per view. He looks like, you know, he's got the he's got the team, he's got the promoter, then he's got the trainer. You know, pretty soon they're gonna be sitting Freddie down. Comparing this kid to Pacquiao, because that's the favorite question in like that's Freddie Roach. So that's the type of publicity he needs. I'm excited for him. And 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 at 140, he's a problem for everyone. And mm. that means that he's got room to grow because he's huge. And I was he's huge. I, I don't was see showing him my girl. You know? I was showing my girl last night the fight, and I'm like, look, he's already feeling on himself. So we gotta be careful. We gotta keep him focused. He's feeling himself. His first pose wasn't the Guitar, his first pose was more like, come on, what the fuck? You know what I mean? That, that, like that, yo, what you thought? I wasn't yeah, going to do it. Yeah, I'm the man. Yeah, I'm the but, fucking man. But no, 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 not yet. We still You're hungry. Fucking man, no, bro. no, you got to keep the, that's, Yo, stay hungry, stay humble. Be humble. That's, stay that's hungry. Ten, ten, no, 10 KO. Nah. What do you mean? Nah. First off, you don't think eyes eyes you on the prize. Uh, and I get the opportunity to be the the, the one since Guzman to do this. on the prize, man. He feel the pride, yo. He feel it. He's like, yeah, I'm here. Eyes I'm on here. the prize, brother. I'm Eyes here. on the prize. Eyes on the I'm prize. That's good. EX. I like him. Listen, all the way, like 140, 147, 154. That's where Elvis finishes. And he, he can get bells in all those three divisions, man. For sure. For sure. But, um... You. He's ranked number fifty in the te- in the Taylor Ramirez division, you know. Um, so it's a problem for those guys. Like in a in a few year in a year or so, is the size and the punching power is an issue for those guys, man. He's gonna grow into his body. He's only twenty four. Yo, yo, I'm afraid to ask this because I'm an Algeri fan. But is, <laughs> is he ready for the wheels of Algeri right now? Listen, Al- before you, before you answer that. Before you answer that, Algeri got knocked down six times, didn't get knocked out. Algeri also faced one of the the most nastiest freaking, uh, you know, um, like like attack pressure fighters in their prime in Ruslan Pavatnikov. And in Algeri beat like Prime Herrera. Um, uh, maybe let me double check that. But yo, I don't know. didn't stop him. Continue. I'm just nah, saying, I don't know. Is that he he did. Big Fish stopped him, though. In six rounds. Who? Went through the big EJ. Yeah, big at, at welterweight. At, at, at welterweight. He did that at welterweight. I think Elvis can stop listen, um, listen, uh, Jerry, man. I'm listen, telling you right now. You're hearing it from me first. Him, I'm saying Rodriguez. Also, Elvis Rodriguez yo, is going to stop. But, my wait. Like, you, you just need to watch uh, the uh, the fight that he had with Tommy Coyle. Like, I believe it was on the AJ on the card. Like, yep. And... It was tough for Algeri. Like, so, like, the first three, four rounds, he could have been stopped there. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, so, I believe Elvis stops him. Like, you know, like, it, it, it was a tough fight. So, Elvis could stop Chris Algeri, former 140-pound champion. Believe, shared the ring so. with Amir Khan, didn't get stopped. Only been stopped to yeah. Earl Spence. Knocked down six times by Pacquiao, and you saying a 10 and old kid that never faced the world champion can beat him. Yeah, yeah. You uh, see that? You I'm see that? Saying uh, that. I'm hey, saying Mitty, this. Mitty, you the coach. You seen that little throwaway jab? Step around right hand and continue that ballerina. Come on, man. Oh, He's like, showing you also, like, we, we we like saying all those things like of other fighters, but we we forget that Algeria fought Pacquiao in 2014. There he we probably go. fought. Can in 2015, like people get towards like the end of their career and the wheels on the same and the level of opposition that he's been fighting at and the way he's been looking, especially I remember vividly that like fight against Tommy Coyle, like tells me that, you know what, like it's time for the younger, much bigger guy uh, to just like come and do his thing, right? So especially like you said, like, they don't put him like as co main events already for no reason. Like some some kids can be moved faster. I believe like he, you know he deals with Algeria to be a super chess, super chess, super chess. Let me ask you guys. Can 
just answer quickly on this one, but then elaborate on the second. So, can he beat O'Hara Davis, who's ranked number fourteen in the? In yes. The, and, and 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 the second is, do you believe not only does he beat, but the top rank will give him Beltran? Raimundo Beltran is still ranked twenty. This is beautiful matchmaking. This is smart matchmaking because Beltran, the same way I'm saying that Algeria has a lot of miles on the clock, this is the same thing for Beltran, right? So uh, if you told me Beltran 2015, that's a difficult fight. That's a difficult proposition. Someone that still has like something left in me, in him and a bit of hunger and all that. But now this has shifted. We're now 2020. And a lot more miles on the clock. So, and that would be that would be very smart matchmaking because people like us will use that as a barometer. We still have in our head, oh, those are the Algeri and the Beltrons of like yesteryear, right? So those are the same guys, man. You know, they, they, those are guys that are you know towards the I end. I mean, but the, the, the thing stuff. is that the thing is that Mitty, uh look, while you believe that he destroys those guys, and I'm happy, right? Mm. The issue is. You put yourself in a position now where you got to also face the other people that are on that level, right? So now, if you, beat a, if you beat a Beltran in an Algeria, we looking at you like it's time to fight Regis. It's time to fight Ramirez. It's time to Not be in there with Tell. Yo, right? so Ness, so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Crescendo for sure. What do you guys think about these names? What do you guys think about these names? Because you got to think about it too, right? Um, what's his name here? Beltran. Beltran got knocked out by um by Crawford. Comey. By Comey. Crawford too. And Crawford, but his his last fight in in the 28th, you know what I'm saying, in 2019, he got knocked out by Comey, right? But, but he's a name, man. Listen, he's 40 oh, hold on. years what about, old. What about what about Elvis uh... fighting a Mason Maynard? Nah, man, he got he Nah, man. All he's known oh, he it. got one loss. Bro, no, that's not Listen, true. He you, lost you to Devin. To he lost to Devin and Tiafimo. It don't make no sense. That's it, Listen, All he's known for is getting beat up. Stay there. Just, like, go and look at, like, isn't it Josue Vargas in this, like, in this division? Isn't Hell it, like, yeah. Just, he's fight. Ta take, so, that, take that IBF little international from Josue. That, that's what I I'm saying. I want to see like, so, so, so those are fights. Like, so Yo, you Puerto Rican versus Yo! Give it to no, me! Keem, Keem, what you like, saying, like, Keem? Puerto Rico those, versus DR. Host wave I'm about to make a post. It's over. Yeah, but re relax. Like, look, look at this, right? So we, you go crescendo, right? Just pick up the American top 15 only. And Host wave I guess, according to BoxRank, right, is rank number 15. Then you have, like, all type of names. Like, you have, like, uh, Clayton Seldin at rank at number 12. You have Javier Molina at 11. You have Chris Algeri. You have Alex Saucedo. You have Malik's o Malik Okins, uh, Barbosa Jr., Mario Barrios. All those guys are dudes that you can take your time. You just give him, like, you know, a Beltron, like we said. Then you just go with yeah. one of those guys. Then you yeah. give him hey, yo, Algeri. Yo, yo, let me just, is he let ready me just for Easter Jr.? Let is me he ready for Easter Jr.? Let me just screen share this real quick because the whole Sway Vargas, Puerto Rico versus DR fight, I've been thought of that, and I posted it on Instagram September 2nd, and I put it right there. Huh? Cause you And, I, and look what I put. I said Elvis is 9-0 one, with one draw, non KOs, ready for a promotional stablemate, Josue Vargas, who holds the IBF North America 140-pound title, 17-1, Non KOs. Is it too it's soon? It's soon, you know. Is it too soon yeah. for Rodriguez versus Vargas? Hmm. And people loved it. So see, I've been thought about that. They need to go ahead and take that belt. You know what I'm saying? Get that. Yo, do that fight in Madison Square Garden if we could get uh, seats. Oh my God, at the Garden, live at the Garden. Oh man. Yo, put Berlanga on the undercard or. Or if that, or, or or he ain't the main event. Elvis, I can't front. He ain't the main event. Maybe it's Belanga who's gonna be fighting uh, Linnell Bellows from from TMT. You know, if he could knock this dude out, now he's showing his powers real. Cause I don't think this dude's ever been knocked out. Plus, he's a decent fighter. You know, um, yeah, man, they got to put this card together. That well, Rosario sounds... on the card too. Rosario, Rosario, which Rosario? I just lost him out. Come on, dog. Yeah. You cross promoting. Now, now you wishing on the <laughs> star. <laughs> no uh, matter what. Nah, nah. You cross promoting. I wish, man. I, wish I was going with easy. a Dominican feel. So. I was wish. I wish it was that easy. Nah, we could bring Adamas back, though. 
You know, Adamus, Adamus looked like he done. He lost that one time. He like, yo, I'm out. Retired in DR. And that's the thing, bro. When $55 is one American dollar, you think about it, man. You If you stack and you just send it back, you 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 making so much in your country, you know, people buy, they they build their houses right away. There's no tax on the land. So some people just like, yo, I'm good. I'm done. I'm 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 I'm, I'm chilling right here I'm by my river. But anyway, what else yo. we talking about? What we got? What we got? What we got? I mean, the last couple of subjects we, we also got. had like a, a UK card, like uh, at yes. least like two no, two no, yeah, two yeah. I watched it. I watched. I watched the. So we we obviously going to talk Gorman and 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 Williams and uh, then obviously Hutch, Hutch, we're going to Hutchinson. Hutchinson. Willie Hutchinson. Yeah. I didn't yeah, see you that. got to. You got to. No, nah, you, you can to. do that. Yeah, I can take. Start with that then, because I, no, I, I, I. Yeah, we I, gotta start with I, that. I just realized that actually, and I, I was surprised. Willie Hutchinson is actually managed by Shelley Finkel. Mm. Like so, you know, I, I I was actually very surprised to to hear that. Uh, but yeah, no, that that was cool. It's is an up and coming kid. He's like, uh, according to Dominic Ingle, like famous like trainer out here in the UK, is his last project, right? So he's the last like you know. Uh, kind of like kid that has come through his gym that he wants to take from that level all the way up to uh, you know titles you know world champion so and then after that he said he's done like investing in boxing like that because probably will just be like too old like so if you think about the people that he did that with like a Cal Brook for example so I mean we can't talk too much about uh, the opposition level that he was in there with but he's going to be uh, you know, I guess like trying to make his mark at like 168 super middleweight division, uh, and you know, based on like his opposition, it looks nice. But he's supposed to do that to those kind of guys, so I, I can't really just be jumping on the the hype train too much. But all the signs are looking good. Like you have like a, a, a good fighter with a good trainer with like a promotion that is like behind him and a manager. That tells me that you know he's looking already ahead and to you know am I gonna make my name in the U.S. right? So having like a Shelley Finkel as a manager is like an unusual move in the U.K. but a smart move, especially in that 168 division. So the only thing I can add to that is that uh, yeah. if if Ingle trains him, uh, you know I'm gonna pay attention. Ingle also trains William, who we'll be talking about later, and he trains uh, used to train anyway. And decided Kel not to train uh, Kel Brook for the Crawford fight. Um, and and the last thing I'll say is that I hope I can look like Ingle one day. Because I bet you he's uh, he's my age or older or slightly. Oh, yeah, he's, old, he's older than you. Bro, right? my man guns are insane, okay? It's crazy. He, he's older than you. This dude, no, seriously, I'm about to screen share this shot with him and Liam Williams. Insane. It's yeah, like. Man. Well, yeah, so my take on it, you, wanna, you want me to wait first? No, no, go. <clears throat> yeah, so my take on it is that Willie Hutchinson, man, he definitely looks the part, man. He, lo he looks like, you know what I'm saying, a nice, uh, tall, strappy young man, you know what I'm saying, handsome, good talker, good sense of humor. In the ring, he throws good combinations. He was throwing four and five punch combinations to the body. He was going up to the head. He's working the jab beautifully. He looks like he could take a punch. Um, his ring IQ for the level that he's at, he showed his big IQ. You know what I mean? I'm really excited about this kid, man. I was watching him fight, and uh, it just brought me back to some memories of, like, you know, Joe Kazaki fighting and that type of, you know what I'm saying, that type of fighter that Willie can be. Obviously, with the competition um, going up, he can show more of his skill set. But, yeah, he's something to look out for, man. Remember I tell you guys right now, Willie Hutchinson, man, out of the Ingle gym. He fights with his own style, mixed in a little bit of with the Ingle style, you know what I mean? And 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 they have all reason to be high on this fighter. And it, I'm, I'm not surprised that Shelly Finkel got his hand all in Willie Hutchinson's business, you know what I'm saying, making it happen. This is, uh, it was an amazing fight to watch. He's definitely an amazing um, fighter to keep watch of and keep notice of. Also, I can't remember his name. I was trying to remember his name, but there's another fighter that was on the card um, he's a cousin of uh, Prince Nassim Hamid. Do you, do you remember his name, Mitty? Who? He was an undefeated fighter. Um, he was out of the. Oh, was, on, yeah, on the on the undercard. Oh, right. Uh, um, I, I, he got upset. Oh, he got yeah. upset. Yo, he was, he, we need to double back. Um, you know, so. I, obviously, I seen the quick knockout that John Beck. I can't pronounce his last name. No, Mitty's, oh, yeah. Mitty's <laughs> yeah, gonna yeah, Mitty's yeah. gonna teach us how to pronounce it. But I'll tell you this: we oh, don't. Damn. We, we <laughs> could just we could just call him Kazakh. Style is his nickname. 
First name is John Beck, which is in, isn't too Give difficult. Me one he's nine and zero, oh, five KOs. He's the WBO Global and the WBC Continental America Champion. Uh, you know, he's an Asian champion. He's trained by Buddy McGirt. He was on the ESPN card, and we we forgot to talk about his very fast and uh, brutal knockout uh, of I don't know who he knocked out, but he slept him. Uh, ass up style too. It was crazy, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but that that's the thing. Though. Like, so I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna take a pass at his name. Like, so it's Zanibek Alim Kanuli. So Alim Kanuli. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, like, again, right? We're talking about an eight and old guy uh, that has like some, you know. Hype behind him a, a little bit like that Willie Hutchinson, right? So I guess like we we have to give him like the same kind of of credit, especially getting like spectacular knockouts, like you said, right? So on that um, uh, on that platform, same way as we hyping up like Elvis, same way we have to hype him, same way we hyping up uh, Willie Hutchinson, right? So middleweight division seems like you know there is like a Another guy from Kazakhstan in there, right? So another puncher from Kazakhstan. So shout out to that country, just like you know, being a hotbed for boxing since forever. But now, on a, on a professional level, like they've always been like a big amateur country uh, with like a good tradition in boxing. Uh, but over the last like six, seven years or so, we kind of seeing much more Kazakhstani fighters out there. And they all have that, you know, power that we talk about, right? So Yep, that's a fact. Interesting, interesting to know uh, that he is uh, signed to top rank, but managed by Igas Klimas, who has, you know, Lomachenko and, uh, and, 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 and Alexander Usyk and all those, those Eastern Europeans. Yeah, almost all the, the Russian guys, but, like, not all of them. Like, like Kovalev, for example, is not under him, like, so. All right, so to talk about the other fight on the card between Mohib Fazeldin uh, yeah, took on Mohib. Luke Jones. Um, Fazeldin is a cousin of Prince Nazim Hamid. He's had an off and on career. He's been um, professional for four or five years, and he's had you know fights here and there. He's only had about eight or nine fights, and um, he was taking on Luke Jones, who is also one of those blue collar working man who fights, and he just needed an opportunity, you know. He's been on the end of wrong decisions. And Fazeldin was pretty much... This was his... This He, he was supposed to win this fight. Let's he keep was coming out party, just like going to, out there to win this fight. and then putting himself on the stage, right? So, because you're always going to run with stories like, oh, you know, he's the cousin of Prince Nassim Hamed and all. But the reality of it is like, he's not really a fighter that has been making a lot of noise in there. Uh, in the UK, but apparently right? Apparently, so, they know him on the circuit, though, Mitty. Apparently, huh? everybody, apparently, everybody knows him on the circuit. They're lying, man. Like, you know, I'm just, I'm just telling you on the <laughs> circuit, yeah, you know, it will be known. But, like, who's, who's like, they like, lying or I'm yeah, lying? Yeah, they, they're lying. No, oh, no, no, lying. you. Like, they're lying. Like, listen, the, the guy fought once in 2018, twice in 2017, and, and he's like, you know, a prospect with what, like, 13 fights. Like, you know, the people that are known on the circuits with like high potential they just like put them on week in week out just go on box red of hutchinson and look how many times the kid box or you know already this year for example right right so so they 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 lying they're hyping because they had to create like a card that seemed like he had some depth in it and that card they really didn't have depth in it right so and you know things like that can can happen you know so, so this is what happens when you you know what i'm saying you have a fighter that's supposed to be touted as being the next one and he gets knocked out standing upright let's move right. on to the next but, fight but, but no, telling that, you, this is what happened but when telling that, you that he's that not fight, heavily touted no no he's not heavily touted because this is what happened you know i can be heavily touted right but do you believe that the my manager really believes in me like go into his record and look at you know his last five fighters his last five fights right and look at the losing record of all these guys. You know, I told you that this is how we build fighters, but you don't do that for too long and too much, right? You it, kind it, of like 
step up the level of competition. He has like one guy out there, like we've got 253 losses against him. Hey, Midi, hey, Midi, I agree with you 100%. The the yeah. only thing that I was going to say is that he changed management now and he got with yeah. Tunde. Hold on, hold on. He got with Tunde Jai and Frank Warren was, this was his coming out to supposed to get his career back on more of like a forward moving regular activity type fighting and he... Um, and it got found out. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> and, you know. he did for sure, <laughs> and and that's all we can say about that. You know, like hopefully he can come back, but but I don't think I think they realize where his ceiling is now, and you know that yeah. that's all we can say about it. You know, all right, let's go well, to Gorman. Moving on to Gorman, uh, man, Gorman was heavy, bro, heavy, but he's got a <laughs> nice double jab. He's very, um poised good left hook you know and listen lardy was he was a handful you know that's an awkward style them punches slapping they coming from all different angles but gorman did what he had to do and got the win he could have looked better both you know uh in the fight and and like coming into the fight you know he was man that tire around the waist was looking real bad he it, it's funny because do you guys feel like he gassed? I didn't really feel like he. Might. No, it, yeah, I right? don't think like, he, I don't think he gassed. But like, if you if you know Gorman, I don't think Gorman will ever come in like. No, in that's how he always looks. You like. <laughs> no, that's but what, he was heavier. He but like. he was heavier yeah, than normal. He, he was a bit heavier. He was a bit heavier than normal. This was the uh, first fight since the knockout loss yeah. to uh, Daniel. So exactly, I think it's like close to a year. You know, if not a bit more now. Uh but yeah, like you know, this is what it looks like. But again. You have to realize that Laute, I, I think like Laute, if you imagine it, is like the type of opponents that promoters love to have. Not only that, number one is quite cheap to bring over and get him to fight on your card. Uh, he looks the part. He looks menacing. Like you meet Laute in a dark alley, I mean, you, you're going to be scared, man. Like, you know, and his physique is imposing. He's yes. like, you know, that the beard, beard, the beard. Oh, blind. Yeah, the beard that he colored, like, he's like, you know, if you have to have, like, a, you guys love those, those superhero arc enemy, like, so he's like one guy that could easily be in one of those, you know, Marvel movies as, like, the bad guy, right? So, uh, so yeah, as a, as a promoter, you bring those guys in because to the public, generally, you see someone and you say, whoa, you know, you're in a fight. Yeah. You're in a fight. And, but the reality of it is, like, Lati only has like few tools in him. He has like that double jab right hand. He has that aggression that he comes forward with. Uh, and people say he has that power, but I don't know if he do really has that power. And Gorman did what he had to do and did yeah. well. Gorman, Gorman boxed beautifully against him, double jabbed him well, used his jab well, and judged the distance well. Every time cool. he fell short with that right hand, he would clock him with like a counter left hook. That's what I was saying. That's what I don't I'm know that Nets. Lardy. That's what I'm let me Nets just get that, this that. off, man. I don't know that Lardy can can land the power, bro. He's he very, can't. He can't. Very unaccurate. Very unaccurate, like, man. They, they all knew. They knew going into it that this fight was not for Gorman to lose. They brought him in, and they say no problem. He's gonna look like a real challenge to people, and you're gonna build your name. But you have the tools that will allow you to beat that guy. And you should beat him. And if you don't beat him, if you can't beat him, then you know we probably don't have like much to do uh, with each other, right? So, yeah. uh, and you know that that's what it was. If you know that, then you know that you know Laute was not really in there as a as a serious opponent. But still he looks a, good because still he never a good gives fight. up. Still a good fight. I yeah, want to see them both. He looks good because he doesn't give up. He's I want to see them both back. Yeah. Honestly, I want to see You will see Laute back. back. 100% you will see Laute back. Frank yeah, Warren will I use him to hype all his heavyweights. Yeah, he I just will, yeah. I just want to see journeymen get cross promotion in the sense oh, that yeah, that happens. In the sense that Lardy gets an American fight, that Gorman himself like I don't want to I like I want to see some like I want to see my man. He's my man now. Black Panther. What's his name? Uh Congo beat him. Luther Freak. Uh, Luther. Luther yeah, Clay. Luther Luther is not is not a journeyman, but like No, no, I know he's at, not a journeyman. This this, this, this not, happens, right? This happens. Any promoter that has seen Lauti now twice, like I'm sure an Eddie is salivating. I'm sure a top rank Bob Aram is salivating and say, Let me just get the in contact with that guy 
and I, we can definitely offer, offer him payday. So what but, he did in those two performances. But do you think if Frank would keep that number away? You don't think it's as easy? Yeah. They 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 will play. They listen. It's quite easy, right? He goes back to Ghana has like two or three fights just to get his ranking and you know remain relevant in terms of like uh, records. Then you bring him onto those fights. That's what they do. Like you know, like look at his record before that. Like you know, he hasn't really no, no, fought no, no, outside of. No, 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 no. You misunderstood his... what I was asking. I'm saying, isn't it as easy as like a, a guy like Bruce Trampler has to have the matchmaker for the matchmaker's phone number for. For Frank no, they Warren. do. They, they yeah. do, like, for sure. Like, so they can it, get, you know, I've seen, like, in this, like, um, uh, pandemic time, I've seen some journeymans being used both by Matchroom and Queensbury Promotion. They, they're they not tied to promotional outfit. They're not signed with a promoter. Because that's what I want to see. I want to see a guy like... The phone like, rings, uh, I'm going to go and, and get my money, you know? I want to so, see a guy like Luther Clay versus... Uh, I put that post up on Instagram, too, a while back, maybe a month ago. I want to see Luther Clay versus my guy over here. Uh, Luther might be damn, more complicated. what the fuck is his name, bro? L- the one, that, the, one, that, the one that has the whole Ric Flair... Thing going on. Oh, Blair, Blair, the Blair, 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 Blair. Blair. Cop. Yeah, Blair Cop. yeah, that's a good little welterweight fight, man. They, they could build that. Yeah, that, that that can, but I think that could be more complicated because, uh, first of all, like Luther is probably signed with someone, like not uh, necessarily a promoter, but definitely signed with Siesta as a manager. So Siesta like, will just try to navigate his career properly, and also like yeah, you're but trying you don't to think get that's an on- opportunity for uh, him. Yeah, you're trying to get him on, the, on in the U.S., right? And then, like, I believe, like, there was, like, uh, uh, was it Cunningham or, that you had on uh, on an interview recently? Yes, like, yes. They'll tell you. If the network does tells you, like, you know what, like, Clay Congo doesn't do anything for us, then it won't happen, right? So Absolutely. You know, that, Absolutely. That, that's as simple as that, you know? So. Yeah, I mean, again, networks aside, that's a good little welterweight fight. I think that uh, Blair Cobbs is 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 pretty wild, but exciting, and yeah. uh, you know they both. I don't think they both have this overly large. Pop. I could see that be a ten round war, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and 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 obviously Cobbs can build it. Luther strikes me as a as a calm guy. But maybe, you know, he can build up to that one, man. I, I like that fight. I hope but, so. But, I, I hope so. Like, that would be good for him, like, at some point to get that break in the, in the U.S. And, and do and do his thing, right? So, you know, we can wish him that at least. Man. So, moving on to my boy, man. This guy's becoming my guy, especially after beating. Listen, uh-huh. and he lost. Didn't he lose twice to beefy this guy? Uh, yeah, 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 he did, like, bro, one controversial, bro, uh, two well, both lo- controversial, yo, actually. talk about bounce back, people talk oh. Tevin Farmer, I mean, two, lo- I wrote this guy off, I wrote him off, and then, and then I, I seen him beating up dudes, and I still picked Alantes <laughs> Fox against him, and he beat Alantes up, and look, what he, what he did yesterday, it's nothing, but the fact that he's actively wanting to fight Andre, I don't mm. know. Maybe I'm giving them more stock because but, of that, and maybe I shouldn't. Let me just end it with that. Maybe I should. Maybe I shouldn't because what mandatory doesn't want to fight their first world title shot? Well, this isn't his first, right? Because he lost the beef nah. once. But uh, w- w- what I will tell you is like th- those two losses to Liam Smith, we can't just put too much into it because, number one, the first fight... Uh, was very controversial because he eventually like uh, went on the scorecard because of a nasty cut uh, that was like uh, as a result of, of a clash of head. But he went past like the the first four rounds, so we went to the the scorecard and the scorecard were controversial. A lot of people had like Liam uh, Liam Williams winning. Then they had the rematch, and once again that was not like uh, a convincing uh, affair, right? And uh, yeah, like a lot of people think that Williams won. Actually, the, the first fight he didn't even go on a scorecard. It was stop on a cut, stop on a cut, uh, and yeah. So he has like a, a loss by stoppage for a non-legitimate reason, basically, right? But now, hey, what he's done over the last few fights, like you said, is really good. He showed you that he's like a new fighter. He's like in there with what seems to be like a trainer that he gels with, he clicks with. You know, both styles like match up well, 
and he's happy and his performances are crazy he goes out there and he stops people yesterday you said he did nothing but actually i can tell you what no, he did no 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 i didn't did say something. he did nothing no, no, I he said, looked like nothing he looked like no 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 I, no i said you know this guy isn't you know that type of opponent oh, yeah the he opponent got stoppage okay. i get it know, yeah it i a, get it so like but what he did to me is a fighter that understood very quickly that you know what i got done dirty on a cut against Liam Will uh, against Beefy like uh, against Liam Smith I'm not going to let that happen again very early on in a in a fight there was a clash of head but before that clash of head you already hurt his man yeah both you of already them were hurt cut. You know, yeah but both of them were cut and as soon as he felt the cut and the blood dripping he went into kill mode he said you know what I've got to end this in this round there's no like no no contest or whatever. I'm finishing it in this round, and he went and did that. So for me, it's like a dangerous fighter and someone who can finish a fight with someone at that level, I whenever mean, he wants. I, I, and that's what I he did. can't. I can't discredit the Liam because I've been following Williams for a while. So I watched the Cochran fight, obviously, and then uh, I watched the two Liam Smith fights. So in the second fight, we actually bet on Liam Smith. Mm. And he lost, so I had a bad taste in my mouth. Came back. Oh, Williams, you bet on Williams, right? Yeah, I bet on Williams, but he yeah. lost. He lost yeah. on the second yeah. one. So I, had I bad... don't think he deserved that loss, you know. Like, but he I lost. I had that bad yeah, taste. So uh, the the Nicholson fight didn't watch, but the Efron fight did watch, and we live bet on that fight. We got lucky to live bet, and Efron <laughs> looks the part. He's kind of muscular, tall. And he got the late knockout. That's when I started paying attention. You know, so I watched the Melinda fight. He also got the knockout. And then obviously we watched and did a fly sure, fight yeah, chat for the Fox sport. fight. I didn't watch the, the the Karim, whoever he is, but I watched <laughs> the Fox and now I watch Robinson. So I'm I'm built in like he built me up for the Andre fight. I don't mind the Andre fight. That being said, Andre said he ain't fighting no Liam Smith and, 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 and names like that don't do anything. He wants to fight Billy Joe and become a three-division world champion. But this is the thing. You keep chasing this guy up divisions, and it's, it's not happening. You know what I mean? Like, he was your first DAZN fight. It didn't happen. You've already asked him years ago. Like, you're, you're five fights into your DAZN. You renewed your DAZN contract. You been had that fight scheduled. Then you been verbally came out and said you would fight him at sixty eight. That's not happening. I, I I don't know, man. Look, unless he's gonna go the WBO route and 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 tell the WBO I'm vacating, give me my shot at the champion above. Which I don't know that they like. Did he do enough? I know that they have their own set of rules as to how the champion can get the honor of axing the other champion but he didn't even unify and he defended versus dudes i don't know the biggest name i know is like lee keeler and it's Luke not the keeler. biggest i've it's just the easiest to remember because i butcher the the the, the, the ghana or africans name i can wonder i mean it's like it's unfair what they've done to us as boxing fans when it comes to the product andrade. that is demetrius andrade you know what i mean so i'm so my like my standards are so low because of the level of his opposition that Williams, a guy that I've invested, I don't know how many years now, and I'm like, okay, this is it. I've been posting this on social media. Like, Williams knows. He's been on this show three times already since he's been called as the marinatory before and after the Lantes Fox. I, I repost this story. Like, he knows that I'm behind the fact that he's on Demetrius Andrade's heels. Now, does that mean that he can beat him? No. Is he supposed to have that energy as the mandatory? Yes. But who has that en the energy for Andre? So I'm excited. Get behind it. Hopefully it happens. So you want to see this fight then? So you want to see this fight then, Ness? It, I, I, does, Andre, I, I, does Andre have any other options that, 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 that have this little bit of storyline? Like, no, no, he doesn't because as you can tell right now, um, I, put in the, I put in the pre-pro a video of Daniel Jacobs saying that he wants to fight Jamal um, Charlo next after he fights Rosado. He wants to fight Jamal Charlo. And we all know that Jamal Charlo don't want to fight Andrade because of the stunt that he pulled when he pulled out of a fight that they were supposed to have and Andrade pulled out. 
So you're right. I agree with you. This is the next best thing. This fight will be action packed because let, Williams will let actually come Let me just interject there, fight. man. That huh? would be interesting if Keith Conley could somehow take Jacobs off of the zone to do a, J a, a Andre fight. That I mean, a, 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 a Charlo fight. That would be interesting to see. You know, Andre. Check out the uh, audio. Check the audio. Jacobs was a, is a Al Heyman guy, but you know it's been a long time since he's been on a PBC fight. Remember, he had a six fight deal that he didn't complete with HBO because they went under, and then he went straight to the zone. Like he's been away from the PBC stations for a while. So to see him fight uh, Charlo would be interesting uh, if it can happen. That's what he said. He wanted man. He said like, listen. That's the, the this whole Rosado fight stemmed from Jamal Charlo and him having beef. So it's like a little round robin that he wants to have between these guys before he, you know, what I'm saying takes on Canelo. So I think that's a good look for um for Jamal, but for Andre it's a bad look because he's on the outside. He's one of the fighters on the outside right now who nobody wants to fight. Billy Joel, you said yourself doesn't necessarily want to fight him. I don't think he'll get a fight with a uh, Liam Smith. You know what I'm saying? And, Liam and, and Liam, no, I know. But I'm saying if, if if Liam Smith can go up to 160, Beefy. Beefy made 160 Beefy. before. No? He is 160. He is 160. Yeah, he's fought. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Good when he he's fought innate. Williams, he was smaller. Yeah, but I'm saying because and, he's and, 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 and hold on. When exactly did he get with Ingle, man? Exactly. Oh, he's, he's, not, just, he's not, he's not like points, four fights man. in there. Four fights in there with England. Oh man! So so no, so they, they developed together, right? So. Listen, listen, listen! I cannot talk about Ingle without talking about that nasal spray. Nasal man. spray, you killing and, you? And, 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 and no, and honestly, oh, and honestly, man. no. Listen, listen! I don't look at it as a steroid, <laughs> Mitty, because I understand that you Thank guys' you. rules and regulations are different, right? So like, as long as they're not in competition, it's okay to use that nasal spray, and. I, I just got to say, his fighters do be in dog shape, man. Like, yo, yeah, even, I, I mean, even like, Galahad, man. Shape. Even Galahad. Even, okay. even Billy Joe. He got okay, those dudes like, ripped hold, over hold there. Hold yo, yourself name, a dude, yes, name a dude, name put, a dude put, out the put, angle put that the, ain't ripped. Put, put the nasal spray aside. Like you said yourself, you know, you want to look like, you know, uh, Ingle. That's, Hell you know, yeah. That, that, that's like the regiment. Like, he's like, <laughs> the, you know, the, the type of like army general, like, or major, like, you know, those people in, <laughs> no, what's the no, name, like Mini, full metal jacket? I can tell, I guy, can tell he's know, serious. Shout at you. I can tell uh, he's that, serious because of his Kelbrook quote, we, we played that, it on air. He said, I'm not That's training Kelbrook is. with a six week fight because I like to win. So I can That's tell his is. mentality. And it's like military kind of thing. Like and he had like he, he had like fighters like living in his house, watching what is he, what they're eating and all those things. Dude is like, you know, forget nasal spray because his whole this is like kind of like putting some like doubts over what is going on and all that. Uh but that's the style of the gym. This is like the yeah. style. That, that's what his dad used to do. It's like, there's two things. They're very unorthodox with their movement. This is what they teach. And they come in shape. That's, you know, those, those Yo. are the two things that are mandatory Yo. for those fighters. Look how special you know? I feel. I got to meet Ingo and the dad. I remember... They they wanted me to believe, yo. Oh, we got before the dad passed. You yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, his father, his father yeah. was alive for the Kelbrook Gennady fight, know. right? Oh, I, I, you know, I know he passed recently, uh, but I don't, I didn't I'm, know that you were, to me. you were. In listen the to me, I'm yeah. pretty sure, I'm pretty sure, and there's video of it because everything I did was yeah. documented. I'm pretty sure his father was alive, right? Um, yeah, probably. So, like, so they like both. In, they both was like, you know, like I was interviewing Kel, so they sat back and listened, but they can tell through my style of interview that I didn't believe that Kel was going to be Gennady at all. <laughs> and, and so they pulled me to the side, and I'm like, nah, you know, I, I, I'm i pretty sure I'm like, nah, this got to be on camera. So we rolling, and the father and Ingo are both telling me how Kel is going to win, and it's just, I'm like, yo, it's not happening. <laughs> but yeah, man, I got to meet him. It was fucking crazy, man. Yeah, man. Nah, nah. I mean, the dad dope, is man. definitely a legend, man. Like you know, for, for his work with YouTube. like a bunch of fighters, you know. So Brandon, you know. yeah, Brandon Ingo. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna see if I can uh, find it on YouTube real quick. 
But uh, where else we going with? It? Is that it? Oh, oh, so 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 yeah. We we, we basically talked about Andre saying he doesn't want to fight him. How do you guys feel about that? Are you cool with that? Because because Andre is a guy that's he's a two division champ. Let's be real, he's a two division champ that you know doesn't get the respect he deserves because he lacks the accomplishments on paper. Uh, he gets the credit from the trainers and, and, and the eye test from most people. But, you know, um, he's, 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 he's being underaccomplished here. So because of that, I guess I do give him a pass in wanting to drop his belt and move up to 68 to chase a bigger name in Billy Joe because he's like he's trying to create legacy, you know? Yeah. I mean, like, I, I don't mind. Like, you know, I don't think, like, people are avoiding – fighters because they're scared of, you know, William Williams wants it. Andrade is a good fighter, but Andrade is probably looking at, like, you know, bigger names and, like, you know, bigger accomplishment. That's what he said. Like, you know, he wants to be, like, three times division, uh, champ uh, three division champion. The guy that he was supposed to fight, you know, at middleweight, you know, they can make that happen, you know, at 168. So why not? Like, so I, I don't mind that, but I do feel a bit sorry for Liam Williams because I, I think he's an interesting addition and an interesting fight. Uh, for Andrade and you know the style would be interesting like uh, a guy that just wants to be all out aggressive against like a very technician that can catch him on a counter I think I favor Andrade slightly but like I could be wrong this is like a, a 51-49 fight you know so in my opinion if Williams win I won't be surprised but I favor Andrade slightly man I think he will just catch him on a counter and you know he's a good technician I, I agree with you man it's all hate, hate on it the tall, on the tall, slick, the tall, slick black fighter in Demetrius Boo Boo Andre definitely gonna show up and put a hurting on Liam Williams coming in there with that angle, muscle all on him. Muscle don't <laughs> win fights. We need that skill. So he definitely gonna show up and do what he gotta do. I definitely got Demetrius in there. The thing about it though, he's getting really old in boxing. This is definitely not gonna help the sport grow if everybody is chasing a name. They're chasing you. Do, nobody knows you. This person is mad at that fighter, so they're not going to fight him. And he's freezing him out because he owed him a position. I mean, all that stuff is bad for boxing, man. We're not getting the fights we're supposed to get. You know what I'm saying? We're not having the big event. We're not celebrating. It's frustrating because, like, Andre is supposed to be fighting Billy Joe and, and, and Jamal and, and Danny Jacobs. And everybody's supposed to be fighting each other. But with all the back and forth... You know what I'm saying? It just, just it just makes it ugly, man. Because now you got a fighter like Boo Boo that's going to have to go fight somebody who, quote unquote, ain't got no name. Mm. Mm. Now that's I get, cool. Well, I, mean, I mean, look, you got to fight your mandatory. Gennady Golovkin made a career out of it. That's why I don't get upset why other people don't do it. You know, Ponce de Leon's a guy that he, he didn't move up too many divisions. Not every this whole jumping division should just started. Like, there's nothing wrong with being Bernard Hopkins and defending your middleweight belt, 20 defenses. You know, make your own lane. Everybody wanna follow somebody else. That's that's the biggest problem. You know what I'm saying? Make your own lane and you ain't gotta worry about legacy, because you will be the legacy that people are gonna try to create. You know, they're gonna try to follow you. But I don't know. I think that's about it, right? We're pretty much done on all the topics. Right, gentlemen? Anything? Else? Yeah, yeah. I I think we're good on all the topics. Definitely it was a it was a decent weekend of uh boxing. Wasn't too bad. Uh I hope everybody had a good weekend and good picks on their on their tickets and everything, you know what I'm saying, worked out the way it's supposed to. Yeah, yeah, man. I, I think, like, I don't know if it was, like, a good weekend of boxing. It was, like, a it was decent. Re relatively slow. I mean, we had, like, a few good fights here and there. I, I mean, the, the UK card to me was not that good. Uh, I wasn't I wasn't overly impressed. And on the on the US side, I think, like, we've only having top rank involved. Like, I mean, that, that was relatively, sm you know, slow, right? So, um, yeah, man. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm happy, obviously, so I've seen, like, the Navarrete fight and the rest of the fight. Like, that's one thing that we didn't talk about. In the UK, uh, you would pay $9 on Fight TV to watch the fight, but they wouldn't even show the whole undercard. Like, it started, like, something like 3 o'clock in the morning. 
And that's why I paid and I fell asleep. I, I didn't even watch that fight live, right? Wow. So I had to go and fight, you know. So that, 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 that sucked a little bit. Like, you know, I, I don't think it was a good weekend of boxing, to be quite honest. But a good thing is we have next weekend to look forward to. And I think that's going to be a good one. I agree. I agree. Yo, so I'm trying to find that video and check this screenshot. I wonder. I wonder what I said. No wonder Billy don't come on this show. Look at this. <laughs> look at this thumbnail. What did I say to get Billy to flip me off while I'm talking to Dominic Engel there? I, I, I was a little. I was a little uh, rough around the edges in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, you went in there. Say what? What? <laughs> you know. What? The thing is that it, I, you know, I, I think. I think when I first started, I took it as like you're lying to me when you believe in your fighter. You know, it's like, what, yeah, do, you, they, they what, don't, like, what so, do you mean? What do you mean Kelbrook's going to yeah, stop Gennady? Exactly. You know, it's yeah, like, imagine yeah, I'm contracted for a job, and especially with someone who tells you, right? Someone in retrospect, like when you heard the word of Ingold now, right? Someone who says publicly that I don't take fight that I can't win. And, you know, he could have well gone out there and just pick up his 10% paycheck for the crawford Kelbrook fight and lie to this fighter and all that. But like now that you know in retrospect that that this is not his style, he's saying you know I ain't taking no fight that I don't believe I can craft a game plan that is a winning one. Now whether he's right or not is different, but he believes in that. He, he sees something that maybe he can exploit, and you have to give him some credit in that Gennady fight. We all say that whoa, you know they actually had some success at some times. He was I don't think he was ever gonna win that Gennady fight. I'm sure he respected that. That was a Gennady damn good uppercut, power. though. He could play that. Yeah. He could play that little. Yeah. He could play the clip yeah. of the uppercut to his grandchildren's children for uh, years. Yeah, hundred percent. But like that. That's what I mean. Like so that that's, you know, they they have to believe in their fighter, and then if they don't, then he's the type of guy that told you that you know I'm not getting involved if I don't believe in him in the first place. So let's open it up, gentlemen. It's time to get to the phone calls. You know the number to call in one four two five five six nine fifty two forty one. Press one one time. Voice your opinion right here on the Voice of the People hotline. Don't forget to add Nesta Gibbs on Skype to be part of the conversation as well. If you haven't already done so. Please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified when we go live tomorrow morning because we are your morning show on your daily commute, especially if you're, uh, you know, in the West Coast, right? If you're up early in the 6 a.m. time, we're up. And for our East Coasters, you're probably already in your office unless you are, uh, you know, get a late start. But you can join us at 9 a.m. Eastern 8 a.m. Central, 6 a.m. West Coast, 7 a.m. Mountain Time, and Calgary Time in Canada, which makes it 2 p.m. in the U.K., right? Midday? After what, time, what time is it on your side? Uh, 9 a.m. 9 a.m.? Uh, yeah, it's 2 p.m. 2 p.m. 2 p.m. 3 p.m. is 10 a.m. So yeah, 9 is 2. So uh, don't forget to subscribe. We're trying to get to 117,000. Looks like we're at 116,482. So we're almost coming to half that goal, which, you know, cannot complain. We're going to go out to the callers. And uh, I think first up looking like I mean an Essex. What's going well, on? What's up? Don't forget Super Chat, yeah? Oh, did we? My bad. My bad. Oh, we Conversation continues then. Let's see. <laughs> Yo, so like, you know, quick one. Like the thing, like I said, we have a nice weekend to look forward to. And that means that, you know, the Pick'em League, Polls will be out there very soon. We have like a very exciting uh, card next week. Obviously, the Lomo versus Theo. It's going to be dividing our audience, dividing yes. our pickers. I got and that's going to create my some. Foof, I got a parlay sip. already with that. Oh, uh, there you go. So, you know, my man is already thinking of how he can make money and make us no, all no, money no. in the same set. way. I already got it set. I locked that one so, in early. Uh, there you go. Locked out. Hopefully you can share, like, the, the secret with us. What is it? Next Friday on a betting show? Yeah. So, you know, f how many weeks in a row now you got it, right? Like, two, this, three weeks? This is my third week in a row giving third a pay in parlay. And this parlay was a plus 483. Hmm. Meaning? That you can make meaning if you bet a hundred, you make five hundred and eighty-three dollars. If you bet ten dollars, you make fifty fifty what I said five uh, plus four four eighty-three. So you make fifty-eight dollars and thirty cents. 
So yeah, so I mean, like you know, and on top of the Loma fights, obviously you have like you're gonna have like you know on the card fights on there, and uh, you also have like a UK cards to look forward to, uh, and you know some uh, some fights on uh, on a Friday. I believe like you know we had like uh, Yevgen Itrov that you know we were supposed to have like a few week back against like Von Alexander, like the the brother of uh, uh, Devin. Ale- Devon Alexander, yeah, like so, uh, yeah, man, it's like quite a few good fights that will hopefully bring us the separation that we need in the Pickham League yes. and just enable you to show your your skills. You I know? mean, so, it, do we really need separation? I, 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 I'm glad you went to the Pickham League. I got it pulled up. I'm screen sharing. This is Patreon information only, but you know those that are good need to be spoke of. And I did mention how, you know, uh, I had went uh, a perfect eye again, because not only did I give you three uh, winning parlays three weeks in a row in the super plus is, right? But I've also been trifecta over here on Patreon. And I just don't want to only toot my own horn. I want to shout out everyone that went 13 straight picks this week. 13 straight picks this week. I mean, I went 13 Not last this week. week. Like two, two weeks combined. Like this what? week. Because like. you got so current when it, points. It's the current month Yeah, when it's, when it's in 13 is total for this month. So there's the oh. accumulation of two weeks. So, oh, so but not, none re, of what I'm re, saying is true then? No, re, regardless, you, you're perfect. Like you, you're perfect. You were perfect for this week. Uh, but for you so, know, so for let this, me see. Let me see. Is this right? Everyone with thirteen was perfect, right? Like real nice. Yeah, yeah. Every, everyone with thirteen. All right. 13 so let's shout perfect, them so. out. Let's shout them out because you know we gotta respect. Yo, Naja, I don't know how you do it, but she's been perfect every week. I literally told my girl all about you yesterday. We can't. I mean, it's just like this shit is crazy to me that you still are number one. This is freaking crazy. Then Mister Adore came out and is like there. With 12, but he don't count in this list. We talking 13, <laughs> Sony. Real Naja, Trey Miller. I be seeing you in the chat too, man. I got to respect, bro. You, you've been talking. I, I remember you, man. I know your, uh, your, your logo, so I know exactly. And it's like, damn, I keep seeing you there. Shout out to yeah. you. He's there. No, he's good. Yeah, he's good. no, 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 and he I, is. I like, I like his contribution gen- in general, not just to the chat, but I believe he's also on the back call and all that. I think he's one of like the, you know, I mean, a lot of people are positive, but he's definitely like a, a good community member and a cool person to chat with. So, so good, man. Shout out to him. See, Trey said, thanks for your cheap bet. That's right, because you don't got to bet 110. You could bet the two. You still going freaking quadruple. But anyway, uh, we got, who else got a 13 here? We got 13, 13. Mark Blake in the Netherlands. That's right. We international, baby. Who else a 13 here? Oh, oh, that's me. Oh, that's me. I'm top seven, y'all. I'm top seven, y'all. Yeah. Yeah, and I moved up. I was dropping. I was in nine with Info Joe at, but we can't talk about Joe because he ain't hit no 13, right? Nope, he ain't hit a 13. That's it. Big nigga the UK, he hit a 13. That, 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 that's what I'm saying. Like, the next week will bring separation because it, there's a lot of 13. Like, the, across the two weeks that we had, if you went for A side all along, then you'll get 13, right? So, uh, that's, so, that, so that's the thing, right? Yeah. So Real quick, I'm just saying to Jeff, In Nova Scotia, Camillo, L.A., uh, my Jimbe in Jersey. Oh, Mitty. Oh, Mitty. Mitty across the Perm Mark. I'm coming. Earthquake in Brooklyn. Carlito in the U.K. Brandon dropping how the mighty have dropped. Uh, But everybody above me, I'm coming. I'm just saying I'm top 10. And I've been holding that strong. There's no, there's nothing wrong with that either. If I never win a championship or never be number one, there's nothing wrong with being top 10 your whole career. You know what I mean? You are a solid fighter. (laughs) <laughs> hey, I'm going to remember this and put a timestamp and a date no, on this. I need to Mitty, have that. Mitty, how Whenever hard we is talk it? about someone in the top 10, I say, don't hate on him. You're a solid fighter, my but, G. But think about <laughs> it. How hard is it to be top 10 
It for is you, hard, man. For your, I whole, get you. I'm just for playing, your whole man. career, like yo, Beltran, I, I doubt he's top ten right now, even though he's top fifty. I'm just I'm just playing with you, man. You know, I'm with you. Uh Daniel said that I check out the fight. Which fight, champ? What fight? I don't know, champ. You gotta be more specific. We going out to our mean though. Shout out to everybody in the TBV Fantasy Pick'em League. Shout out to Mitty, uh, Info Joe. And uh, Steve in Chicago. Who else helps you guys with this? Do you adapt any new people? Or just g- the g- generally, that that's the the group of three there. But like, I've got to be honest. Like, I heard like Steve mentioning a lot, like Trey Miller helping out whenever there's like changes last minute. And I'm sure more people on the back call, on the back um, call, and even on Patreon, like comments and people just like. Giving us like quick heads up. So, so shout out I can't to the name community, everyone, man. Like, shout out to the community, them. keeping it strong. I'm glad that everybody's loving it. I actually love it. Shout out Info Joe. You pushed for this for years. And, you know, I'm a numbers guy. And I love seeing the numbers. You know, I love seeing the numbers. You know, there's some separation. Naja is a 71. And I'm looking at that and I'm like, 63? Wow. She's almost. That's a long way, man. Like, yo, there's not enough fights to make no, that and, way. And I know, and I hear you, but that's that's my issue. It's like, damn, she's almost ten points ahead of me. You know what I mean? I gotta, I gotta make sure I remain as perfect as possible so I don't get buried. I gotta Let stay. T- you, that's it. I can't I, win I a think, world title this year, Mitty, but I gotta stay top ten. I, I think, like you know, let, let me tell you my my view on this, and actually, you know. We should not even be saying that, you know, you on top, you on top. Like, but I believe that being part of the league, like, influences the pick of certain people. And, and what I give a lot of like credit to Niger for, for example, is just keeping very straight and matter of fact with things. Like, it's not like you know what, you know, I like that dude, and he spoke well. No, I, man, let I me heard just his look interview. at what you do. <laughs> Look, look, let me see what you do, and then that's it, you know. So, uh, but yeah, man, like, uh, you know, that that that's the thing. A lot of people also yo, like yo, try to, to Nick, be strategic, yo, right? Yo, so, Mitty, Mitty, come on, you got to bring out the eyebrow. Big Nick is insinuating <laughs> that you're definitely helping Niger. Ah, uh, man, and I'm not helping myself. Come on, Big <laughs> Nick, man. <laughs> you know, so. yeah, Mitty is Mitty, Coach Mitty. Damn, but you're still up there, bro. You are. You got 11 yeah, this week. I mean, like, Which yeah, one you listen, got wrong this week? Which one you got wrong this week? No, it's the week before. Like oh. This week I had it all right. But I, I will tell you like for myself, in that league and on the show also, when I want a fighter to do well, you vote I wrong. want to just pass on the energy also. And I want them like to hear it on it because... I fight myself, and I will tell you, when I go into a fight, there's a lot of, like, mental things that go into my head before a fight. And if my guy that believes in me is not going to give me that boost, like, those are the people that I listen to the most, and I'll be like, no, my my guy that don't believe in me, shit, I'm in trouble, right? Yeah. So there, there's that aspect also. And I don't also want to say something on this show and put, pick something differently on the card. I stay consistent, like, so I'm not going to try to send you off the wrong way. And I generally believe in those guys too, but I also know that they're in top fights, right? So anyway, that that's the thing. I, I don't care about like, you know, being top top, although I'm coming for the top. You know? Mitty, <laughs> so, Mitty, you know? Mitty, looks like we got a non Patreon accent. When do it cut off? Every month All right. at the end of and, the year. Yeah. So 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 let me tell you, like so every month we have that concept of the pro league, right? So the pro league is to allow everyone that wants to enter and just like you know put a little wager down and then we we decide like to give a gift well you know to the the person that comes on on top like quotation mark with the gift like so if you don't know what we're talking about just drop us a message we'll explain to you i mean you gotta be a patreon to know it's if you ain't a patreon (laughs) then you won't know these things exactly but you know to cut it short like you know in a monthly league it cuts like it resets every month, and you know we're gonna decide who's the winner at the end of the um, um, of that month, and that winner gets a gift. But then there's also like the cumulative league, which is like the the yearly league, uh, which you know you just have to be a patron to make your pick. You don't have to put like an entry fee above and beyond being a patron. And then at the end of the year, 
December end of the year, we will tell you who is the master picker. Like you know, since we started in August, all the way up to you know end of December, who's got the most pick rights, and that guy or that person, you know, will get uh, I guess like some recognition within the community. So that's what we have, man. Like yeah, join Patreon and then ask us all the questions. We've got rules out there also on Patreon and. Anytime you feel like asking a question, shoot you know, shoot your question. We'll be happy to clarify anything on on uh, on the Patreon. air and on Patreon. <laughs> cool. All right. Patreon. Hey, what's good, fellas? TBV always doing it. What's going on? <clears throat> what's up, what man? What, what? Yo, let me linger around for a minute with this um this Navarate, and then I'm going to see. It's a lot of boo-boo talk, it's, and, and, and it, it sounds confusing when I started, but I'm going to clean it up, right? Like, Navarate reminds me of a, of a tiny boo-boo. Like, those angles and the way he was throwing them shots, and he's kind of ducking and... Because truthfully, Via, um, his arms was too short, and uh, Navarate just, you know, everything was just looping. So, so boom, like I, I you know, I, I, I still feel like he still has to prove it to me. But at one twenty six, you know, my biggest thing was no defense or offense. And until somebody, you know, heard him, you know, and and he got the swag too. I know they they overdid it last night. But he is kind of a cool motherfucker when he come in there with the aviators on and the blazer. He's like, yeah, you know, it's a real cool dude. Um, But um, so, boom, that boo-boo talk, right? Like, yeah, I was thinking Williams and boo-boo is a good fight. But, but y'all brought him up, too. And I think he's in play for everybody at middleweight because nobody's going to put him in there with a Charlo. But Jedev Yanchenko was good um, for, for Williams. I thought that would be good for him. Or, um... The, the Kazakh fighter that had knocked, the one y'all was talking about, had knocked out. All those guys are good at middleweight, you know. But uh, ultimately, somebody got to see the man at, at, at 160, and I believe that that man is, is Jamal Charlo. So make some fights at 160. All these guys are doing it early, you know, 12 fights in, 13 fights in. So nobody should be scared to step in there. Um, and that's pretty much my call, man. Everything else, yo, the Tyson uh, Fury Wilder thing real quick, yo, it, it is going to be what it's going to be, but it's more money over the long term. Unless Wilder's trying to retire and cash out with the Fury fight, to me, if you a fighter, you know, I can't say, go ahead and fight Dillian White, go ahead and fight AJ, and then maybe double back. You know, you still can make unified. It's a longer road, but it's worth it. You know what I'm saying? If that's what you really want to do. If that's what yeah. you, you still want to fight. You know what I mean? If, 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 big if. <laughs> that, that that's an interesting perspective man you know and i mean some people are you know with you right just like you don't have to go into that rematch and then those fights what they won't disappear like you fury will still be there i believe you know although he's saying he will retire at some point but then aj will definitely be there and there will still be money in that heavyweight division so uh you know i can see what you're saying i mean but I, i'd rather see Either the rematch or, you know, I'd rather know, right? You know, and I want a statement. I want to know what's going on sooner rather than later, man. All right. I nah, agree. Back, man. Listen, appreciate y'all, man. For sure, champ. Thanks for calling right. in. See you in the AM. On your way to work, champ. On your way to work. Don't forget, we the daily morning show. We're going out to Cincinnati zone. Falling from grace. Oh, oh, all that prize, Mitty. He ain't know what to do with all the prize. This is what happens to, to you know. This is the frame, this the is, frame went to his head, man. He started to party, ladies, exactly, all that, you know? exactly. <laughs> it, it, it's about how good are you with your boxing knowledge and how consistent. You know, anybody <laughs> can be Daniel Son with the chopsticks. Getting the fly on the first shot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Can you consistently catch the fly, Mr. Maurice? What happened, Cincinnati? Yo, yo, can you hear me? 
Claire. You ain't got no intro. You ain't got no intro. No Brenda? intro, man. He, he cheap. He bugging out here. Spending all his money on what he said on Patreon. Cocaine and what? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to find my way, man. I, I let the fame go to my head. I let my victory go to my head. Too much partying. Too many bitches. The liquor, the cocaine. It was just all too much. You know, this last few weeks has just been a fog for me, man. I, I don't know what's going on. Then on top of that, you know, my wife bought me this heavy-ass Green Bay Packers robe. I've been wearing that when I make my picks, so I think that's having an effect on me. I think she spiked my water for dinner. I think that's having an effect. So just going to sit back, evaluate my team, you know, evaluate the people around me. Link up with my brother Trey Miller, man, and, and get back to it. Like I said, the the limelight that's it's just been too much for me, man. I, yeah, man. You know, then we got this robe gate thing going on. So, you know, I'll be back. I'm only two losses then. You know, I'm only two losses down from the top. So I plan on, you know, checking myself in the rehab and um, finishing it. <laughs> Naja gloves. Naja is wearing gloves that are not, you know, you need to check them, you know. I need to check her pen. <laughs> she got the type of pen she using her. I got to check the, I don't know, man, her phone. I think she's got like a genie or somebody giving her the right pics or something in her phone or some shit. She's just getting them all right, man. So, I don't know. Like I said, it's only two losses. So, you know, I took a chance with Via. I thought Via would be able to outbox him, which he did, you know, second half of the fight. He just couldn't get out of range when he was pulling straight back. He just didn't have a uh, reach advantage. If he had a reach advantage, he would have probably been a little more successful because Navarrete is just not that good. The punches were sloppy. Footwork sloppy. He's slow. He just got power. So once he runs into a guy who could take a punch and box a little bit, he'll lose. They're not going to throw him in there with Shakur. I even think Kid Galahad to beat him. Everybody laughed when I said that, but I picked Galahad to beat him. But uh, like I said, man, I'm only two losses down. So, yeah, I plan on, you know, finish this month off undefeated and, and re reclaiming my title. You know, I ain't ready to throw in the towel yet. I don't so. know how that's happening, man. That, lo tell me yeah. shit, man. that Loma I car going to separate the weak <laughs> from the strong. Mm -hmm. know, I'm telling y'all, like I told them uh, this weekend, a lot of y'all picking lip and gets. Later on this month, that's where I'm going to gain back some ground. So go ahead and pick Sergey Lipman yet, man. That's that's all mm -hmm. I'm going to say. But, uh, Yo, yeah, man, the champ is still here, man. Like I said, I'm, I'm checking in the rehab. I'm, you know, I'm going to you know, get back to being faithful to my wife, lead a big titty blonde hair, groupies alone. And... <laughs> I don't know, man. Yo, Just... Brendan, you said like Vida was doing well in the second half of the fight. What? What second half in the local room? <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, didn't, I saw him do well maybe in the 11th round or the 12th yeah. round, like with the 20 seconds to go. That's when he decided he wants to be brave. I was like, what? <laughs> you know, crazy. Yo, uh, we got Trey in the bay. What up? Uh, hey. Brandon, bro, you hella stupid, man. <laughs> hey, Francis, man, something you were saying earlier when you was like, wow, 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 can y'all hear me? Yeah, go ahead, you clear. Yeah, 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 yeah. You were saying Wilder was the problem, right? But I kind of saw that in reverse. I was like, shit, eh, eh. Fury couldn't make a big fight with AJ. Wilder couldn't make a big fight with AJ. Them two, them two no, dudes no. come together and, and made two fights like one, two, three. You know what I'm saying? Um... <clears throat> Shout out to Nyjah too. She running. She, she got y'all boys running out here. Yeah. Uh, shit. I had some other stuff to say too, man. But I, I kind of forgot my points. Damn. I forgot what all we talked about. That's all right. That's my call, y'all. All right. We got uh, one in the BX. You rocking out? King Bourne. When you see old dirty bastard fall in a position like that, then you know that I'm getting ready to bust your <laughs> Yo, 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 y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? Clear. Yep, yep, yep. 
What's going on, mm. Mini Ness, man? Yo, I got beef with Ness right now, so I'm going to put it on the line <laughs> like this. Let's get to it. Yo, Ness, man, what's up with this Loma and Tia Fimo, man? The whole two weeks you talking about such and such and this cat, that cat. Y'all know that's a big fight. Let's get to it, man. This whole week we got to talk about Saturday, man. You know I'm going out to where Info Joe and JP at. You're going to watch the fight together. You're going to have a good time. And I'm putting it on the line right now. Yo, Tia Fimo, L. Brooklyn is going to knock Loma Chinko smooth off out his shoes. He knocking him out. Let's get to it, man. So this whole week, we did talk about Loma. You know what I mean? Yo, I saw that picture. That picture was scary. You know what I mean? With, with, with Errol. But like I said, he on some Wolverine shit, y'all. He coming back. But, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm pro East Coast. I know that. I got Danny Garcia, but I'm working. You know what I mean? Listen, the Navarrete fight, let's call Navarrete like a real, real poor, two-cent, $5 man, Prince Nassim. Y'all saw that uppercut he hit homeboy with? Yo, that was that's called the layup. You ever play basketball, Minnie? And you doing a layup? You see how your hands go? That's how he hit him with. That seemed like a layup, yo. I'm like, yo, I never. I, listen, last time I saw somebody get him an uppercut like that. That's Chris Nassim, man. Yo, he. It was like a layup when he threw it. I said, what the hell is he doing? Why he just hit him with the right? Boom, knocked him. You know what I mean? But like I said, man, uh, um, yo, we got a new superhero. He from Dominic. He from the Dominican Republic. Platinum's power. Yo, Elvis is no joke, yo. At one forty, I got, I got Regis and Elvis going at it. Who want it? You want it, Ness? You want it, Mitty? Yo, Francis, you want it? Who yeah. want it? Yeah, let's I do it. it. Yo, I'm let's get it, to I'm Andrade, it, I'm with it. Man. Let's get it to Andrade. Andrade, move up to 168 and fight Caleb Plant. He got a lot. Yo, he can get big Charlo finally at 168. Don't worry. Don't, don't, yo, don't, don't worry about Tony Homeboy. Worry about Caleb Plant. Worry about uh, uh, Benefitas. Worry about them dudes, man. Come up to 168, man. Get a challenge. Get nice. You already nice. Get challenged. Get challenged for a minute, man. Let's see somebody try to put hands on. Let's. Let me get to Steve in Chicago. What up, champ? My town up in town. Hey, Daddy. This is Dollar Beat. I drink soda. I eat pizza. I hang out with chicks all day. You fight still can't beat me. They fight every day. They gain the gym every day. All right, give me the double shot of crow. I know you're waiting for it. All right, yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna go as deep as Brandon is that my wife poisoned me and brainwashed me or whatever. But you know, hey. I went for the underdogs, and, you know, hey, it didn't work out, you know. But, hey, we got more left, in, in, you know. Last week I was 100%, you know, and now, you know, I don't know what to say, man. Navarrete, I don't know. I don't know, man. He got some power, but it's like Villa got skill, man. He was making him like... We were taught, like, if he didn't get knocked down, he would have won. Like, he won the majority of the rounds. It's just them knockdowns put, you know, if you look at the scorecard, the, those knockdowns put Navarrete, you know, over the edge, which, you know, he's he going to be a problem, but but I don't think he's uh, he's unbeatable like Brandon said. I, I don't know. I'm not going to go as far as uh, Kid Galahad, but. He's definitely going to be a problem, but, uh, and Lardy, you know, Mitty gave me a lecture on Lardy, kind of like what he gave you guys. I'm not going to get into details, but yeah, 
you know, what are you gonna say about that? But hey, what did I didn't care? What did you say about Canelo? Like that, it's he's gonna fight it even more or something. What what was the details? No, that it's gonna drag out more because now the zone has put it in motion to bring it back to district court of L.A. or California rather, versus being in the big boy federal court. Oh, okay, okay. Hey, man, why don't they just feed Triple G to Andrade, man? What? what? You know, they're both on the zone. It, you know, if if I don't want to see Triple G fighting a guy like Steve Rolls again, like who's who's Triple G going to fight, you know? I mean, I know his last fight was Dervinchenko, but, like, put him in there with Andrade. Let, let's get, I mean, that's what I don't understand sometimes about the zone. Like, you're going to push Canelo to fight the dudes that, you know, why don't you push these other guys? Like, you would get more su- subs with Andrade and and Triple G than you will, you know, Triple G or Andrade versus some no name. Like put them two guys together. Like you're trying to put, you know, Canelo with these other guys. You know? No, and that's the thing, they only want to force Canelo. Right. That I don't get it. I, I don't get it. Like that that's why their brand ain't taken off. You know, you just wanna put the heat on one guy. That ain't right. You know, put a heat put heat on Triple yeah. G. You guys signed him. But yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's all right. I agree with you. That, that that would be good. But you see, man, like you're the only guy that's honest enough to ask for your crew as well. Like that's good, man. Like you know, Brandon yeah. came in and did like his comedy show, but he didn't ask for his crew. You know. <laughs> no. But now nah, like, yeah, it's it's a good shout, Steve. You know, like I think you know Triple G versus Andrade would be a good fight too. And it's better than what, you know, they're probably going to do in the absence of Triple G versus Canelo, right? So, let's see. Hopefully they hear us or they hear you and they do that. That's a big fact. Yo, shout out, shout out to Marvin, man. When the awards go out, he might have to get most improved, man. He started fighting at Border Wars at, 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 at 248 pounds. And he's talking about vacating his... Titles and fighting at 175, possibly now. Jesus. Crazy. Uh, let's see. We got Stonebone Boxing, Colorado. What up? What up? Chilling. Oh, man. How y'all doing tonight, man? Hope y'all, hope you're having a great night, man. Just have me some uh, good pizza for dinner, man. My pizza, man. It's pretty good. Hey, I uh, might get some pizza. I don't think my girl cooked. Yeah, I had a little buffalo chicken pizza, man. It's it's one of them. It's my pizza. It's like a, you know, like the little express chain pizza where you just go up, pick your dough, and pick your sauces, put, tell them what cheese and what toppings for like $8 for like a 12-inch pizza. It's pretty bomb. But, uh, yeah, that Earl pitcher, man, he just, he released that himself. Hell yeah, on his yeah. Instagram. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I just, yeah, I had missed a little bit of the show. Yeah, that's a uh, graphic pick, man. I I think he must be coming into uh, some type of acceptance zone, you know, where he's starting to let it out. So Danny might be in trouble, man. He might have found he might have found what he'd been missing in a little while, man. Danny might be in trouble. They're going to keep coming up with uh, rumors for Fury. They want, they want Wild out the picture. And as long as Wilder don't say nothing, they're going to keep making rumors. But just let them keep talking. It's just going to be more power for him to negotiate and the more money they're going to have to pay him to make that fight or pay him to not make that fight. It ain't going to be like he's going to walk away. There ain't no uh, time frame to say all that uh, it expired, his contract expired. That would be extended due to COVID, just like probably everybody's contract. Um, Navarrete, keep winning. Just like we got Jose behind, uh, but keep winning, Navarrete. That's that's a nice uh, plate of Mexican food for Shakur to eat up and beat up on in a big fight. So just keep winning. So when Shakur go to 35, move to 30, just keep winning and stay on his curtail. And he's going to put in that work. And I'm ready for the uh, Frampton. Frampton, he going to uh, – Jamel beats Frampton. He'll vacate. Go to 135, challenge for that belt, and Shakur will fight for uh, the vacant title. Yeah, you can just write that down. I'm going to catch y'all later, man. Great call. Great, 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 great call.
We going to, yeah, man, that's my nominee. We going out to. Just your info, Just Yo, 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 what's up, my boxing brothers? Info, what it do? What's up? Hey, man, you, you can go back to my old intro, man, until I fix that one, bro. Nah, it, it sound good. You know what? It done kind of grew on you. I can hear it now. Like, after listening to it over and over, I hear everything now. So, whatever, it's on you. He's right, man. Like, you have to go back to the old one. Oh. <laughs> Tell him the truth, Joe. Yo, people want the old one, Joe. That's right. That's right. Yeah, go on back to the old one, man, until I uh, fix that one right, though. Uh, man, uh, cool fights this weekend. Uh, about the Earl Spence, man. Let me say this. Uh, was it two or three years before I fought in Border Wars? I had back surgery, right? I couldn't walk or nothing like that. You know, I used to work for the phone company, climbing poles and all that shit. But uh, I couldn't walk or nothing, man. So after, I, after my uh, surgery, uh, rehab and all of that, man, when y'all was talking about border wars, that just motivated me. Let me see where I'm at now. You know what I'm saying? And it pushed me. So saying that to say about Spence, that injury, man, gave, like him, it gave me a newfound uh, uh, love of life and uh, of, of everything, man. I started treating my body ready uh, better. I, I didn't work out before prior to my, my back surgery, nothing like that. So it inspired me, you know what I'm saying, to get back in shape and get my body together. So I will say that I could be a motivator for him like it was for me going through all that trauma, you know what I'm saying? And I was coming from not able being able to walk, period, you know what I'm saying? So for me to bounce back like I did and, and then win my fighting border wars, so you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that motivated me. But... uh. Real nice and chick, man, or anybody, man. If, if if she continues on the track that she's on, man, I'm gonna have to uh send her some cash, man, play some bets, bet, big bets in Vegas, man. Because yeah, this man. is phenomenal, man. For real. Yeah. Real talk. Naja, also, Naja, <laughs> you need to call into the betting show and help us, at least on the betting show. Damn. Hey, man, my wife, I told my wife also about her, and she was like, tell her. I said, go, girl. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Man. Like, girl power. I said, out of all these men, you know what I'm saying, for her to do what she's doing, man, is amazing, Every man. Week, you bro, know? She, yo, the, Every the week. Yo, the crazy thing is that she ain't miss a week in number one, man. That shit crazy. Right. But I'm coming, though. So, Brandy, all y'all look out, man. Info Joe is coming. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, far as Wilder, man, I hope they don't uh, prolong that fight, man. I want to see it this year. Uh, anytime, anytime. I, 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 I want to see it this year. That's all I got, though. But uh, what else were the topics? Uh, Navarrete, I picked that fight right. Give me my crow for the uh, Lardy Gorman, man. Mm, you picked Lardy, too, man. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Got to go, got to go, got to go to them boomerangs. My Jean Bay, what up? It's on you. Good evening, good evening. Buenos noches. What's up? Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, I just want to uh, shout out the community. Shout out Coach Mitty for getting me um, correct and continuing my uh, progress in losing this weight. Making sure that I'm a, I'm alive to see my daughter's graduation. Um, but yeah, man, uh, these fights were crazy. I, I mean, it wasn't too much, but Navarrete, like I said, I, I figured he was gonna win because he had the power. But he's susceptible. I mean, he's awkward, but the right boxing mind will eventually get to him. Um, he's there to be hit. He's there to be outboxed. It's just gonna happen. Um, yeah, just can't wait till uh, till Loma and uh, until Fimo. I got till Fimo though. Stating it right now, uh, knockout fifth round. Uh, but yo, that's it. I'll, I'll catch you on the next one. All right. Thanks for the call. My Jimbe, my Jimbe. Shout out to my Jimbe getting Border Wars ready. Yeah. I seen it on the boxing scene article that he's hooked up with a world-renowned trainer from across the pond. 
and they're, they're, they're giving him a, a, a diet plan, and uh, he's going to be looking to make a debut in Border Wars coming soon, man. So shout out to my Jean Bear, the Lomillo, Sammy Sosa style. Uh, we going out to Trey and the Bay Boomerang. I'm not, I give it to King Bourne. All right. King Bourne Boomerang. The real color of the year. King Bourne. Yo, you hear me? You hear me? Listen, yes, man, sir. like I said, yo, this is what we're doing here. We got to, uh, uh, um, I just feel like this, man. We, we got to talk more about this to, to your fimo. Yo, Info Joe, Mayembe. Mayembe, see it? We all see it, man. You all see it? Blind man can see what's going to happen to Loma, man. Yo, he going to get knocked out. The Pedraza hit him. What you think Tia Fimo going to do? Look what Tia Fimo did to Richard Coleman. And we know how Tia Fimo going to make it rough, tough, Brooklyn style, East Coast style, rough and rugged, Philly style. Man, he going to rip him up so bad, he going to beat him down and knock him out. It's, it's coming. It's coming next Saturday, y'all. You going to see it with your own eyes. You think Loma, everybody talk about Loma's very Listen, man, this is what's going down. You know what I mean? This is where it's at. It's going down. Yo, Ness, man, let's get this whole week rocking, man. And on the back chat, I'm going to get us in a frenzy. That's all I'm asking. Loma or Tio? Loma or Tio? Then you know next week you got to get in a fr frenzy with Leo Santa Cruz and Tank, man. You know what I mean? Y'all got to get it going with that. But like I said, this is what we're doing here. Yo, and, and listen, out of 150 people in this goddamn pick em league, I'm trying to be 1 to 15. Because, you know, if you're 15, you're still a good fighter. That's 10, you nice. 15, still good. That's respectable. You know what I mean? That's respectable. Word so, is wrong. That's respectable. So I'm going for 15, man. Out of 150 people. Word. And yo, Brandon, listen, man. Yo, you do. Like I said, you won. You know, you sleeping on them sandy seats, but you get it back. You only two of them. You know what I mean? I'm trying to be top 15 at the end of the year, man. You know what I'm saying? And yo, shout out to Info Joe. Like, like I said, man, I, I'm scared for Danny Garcia right now, y'all. Yo, shout out to Trey in the Bay. L love you, baby girl, with the boomerang. You know what I mean? You're going uh, uh, um, to gonna get it on after these dudes get off the phone. We're going to have them in the frenzy. We're going to talk. We're going to laugh. This is what we do with the back chat. Peace. Yo, I, I love that pick em league because it, it just like... It just makes everyone like talks more sensibly exactly. about like ranking for fighters and all that. I, I, I heard before like you know Dylan White is trash. He's number eight. He's <laughs> good. I'm talking fifteen is good, man. So it's all good. Nah, <laughs> you know? yo, it's beautiful. I love it. It's making people put respect. And he's right, yo. He's right. A top fifteen is respectable. That's respectable. Yeah, 100%, but it's just like, you know, so, it's just... So I just want to say, what is a top 10 then, huh? Yeah! Yo, and then he put it into perspective. Out of 100 and something people, he want to be 15. And I'm like, damn, as he's talking, I'm like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm yeah. number seven. That's I'm what I'm saying. Good. When you look at those <laughs> rankings, like, you're talking Hell out of, yeah. like, 3,000, 4,000 people. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, Word. Let no me go good, to uh, Boomerang. Stoneball. Boomerang. So, so who in the fifties, Ness? Because I'm about to start calling dudes bums now. So oh yeah. They be, dis they be disrespecting <laughs> fighters. Yo, you know? yo, they love to call yo, fighters here you bums. Go. Journeymen's who the journeyman? Yeah. Uh, who the gatekeeper? Who the gatekeeper? Oh, no, Trey, the, the Trey journeyman, the I can tell you, they, they Trey have in the bay. <laughs> Trey in the bay, a journeyman. Lids low, a journeyman. <laughs> oh, uh, man. yeah, stainless journeyman. Oh, Greatness, oh, man. journeyman. Iron Sal, journeyman. I mean, yo, it's just a lot, man. Christian fight fan. I think Christian backed out. You know, I don't know. But yeah, it's a few. It's a few. <laughs> yeah, man, it uh, it do make you it do make them think a little bit. When you comparing yourself to numbers, you do think 
um, what is it, uh, respectably now, you start to think like, oh, yeah, I better stop calling the number numbers ninth guy nobody in trash because I'm 27 in my league. So if that <laughs> if number nine in three bodies in sanctioning bodies is, is a bum, you number 27 in your league, what that make you? So let's be realistic how we talking about these <laughs> fighters. Hey, but I hey, like Joe, I agree with Joe, man. Like sometimes when you go through some things, it can help you refocus, get your re uh recenter gravity. Like when I first got to Colorado, my girl uh Lee, uh, flipped my truck. If I don't know how many times to do behind us said maybe eight times. And what's crazy, she didn't have none but bruises. But I broke out a broke hip on one side, a torn uh, hamstring on the other side. Yeah, I mean I was on crutches for months, in a hospital for weeks. I know the pain and the trauma you've been through, and it give you a a new little definition and purpose where you're gonna go hard. So I feel like Danny. I hope he got the best bar he can get out there in Philly because just like I feel like Bud going to stop Kelbrook in six, I just feel like with COVID and everything you've been through, you know what I mean? You're really about to see probably a mo- one of the most focused Earl we've seen probably in years, probably maybe since maybe like Bondu or something because he done got money, fame. You get a little distracted. I think you got the most focused guy Everybody coming off COVID, so everybody in the same playing field. All it is, I heard y'all was talking about, oh, Kell Brooks, short camp. No, if you've been doing nothing for eight months, and you ain't no way you can only have a six-week camp. You've been having a whole eight-month camp if you was a real champion. I'm going to catch y'all later. Word up. Uh, Thanks for the call. My Jean Bet Boomerang. Yeah, so I heard through the grapevine that Naja Chick was picking uh, Loma. Y'all just go ahead and follow her right now. Make sure y'all all pick Loma. Um, do your picks. Make sure that uh, that y'all, you know, follow in those footsteps. But I'm telling y'all right now, October, I'm paying my mortgage with y'all money. All day. Um, and on to Border Wars. 185 is what I'm shooting for. And anybody that's there, just be aware that I'm a straight savage. (laughs) Savage out here. And I want all that work. Everybody (laughs) want all that smoke. I want it now. At 185? Yo, but I heard you tall, bro. Why you want to drop so much? You 6'3". Shh, shh. Don't say nothing, man. What's wrong? That was between you and me. That's it. Nobody got to know nothing. Bro, that's just, I'm just saying, that's like, yo, you're going to be you gonna be like European and shit, slender as hell, super, super, super rip. My wife is expecting a six-pack, and Mitty promised her, so I got to come through. Nah, you're going to get uh-huh. it. You're going to get it. You're going to get it. Yo, but I appreciate y'all. Yeah. Me all right. Have a great night. Yo, you know, it always, yeah. it always, you know... Like, I always went crazy when I looked at, like, Vlad. He's, like, 245 with a six-pack. I'm like, how? You know what I mean? Yo, even though even man. though AJ now does it the same way. Man, those guys, like, though, they're beasts, though. Like, you see them, like... Yeah, but it is impressive, though. You see oh, those guys? Yeah. Like, big dudes, man. But that is all the callers and all the boomerangs. We are out in SGTO, Instagram, and Twitter. Catch us on the next one. Peace. No, no goodbyes. Yo, peace, people. See you on Thursday. Yeah, next up, Sports Talk. Next up, Sports Talk. Every morning, 7 a.m., Monday to Friday, Eastern Time. Check me out. Appreciate it. Peace. Peace. Peace.